College Football on CBS Sports Network is presented by Geico. This is Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut, side of a very important midseason non-league matchup between UConn of the American Conference and Missouri of the SEC. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to East Hartford. Great to have with us. Dave Run alongside Corey Chavis, former Pro Bowl defensive back, joined by Melanie Collins throughout the broadcast on the field as well. Bottom line here, Chave, these teams would love to win this game, thinking about a bowl game down the line. But for the here and now, air raid offenses. I can't <laughs> wait to watch a lot of passing yards tonight. Well, I know you can't wait. And, and the one thing that you love, down the field passing, guess what? Missouri leads the nation in terms of 60-plus yard passes. And guess who's sixth? Connecticut. So we've got exactly what you want. A little bit of offense. I'm trying to convert you to defense, but <laughs> a lot of offense and throwing the football. Time now for Do Project Smarter. Brought to you by the Home Depot. Mizzou QB Drew Locke leads the FBS yards for completion. 50 career TD passes. He's a star. Well, he's gotten smarter, and I think that throw against cover two, when you throw it, Dave, in between the cornerback and safety, it proves that those smart decisions pay off. And this against Georgia down the field, not necessarily what you would expect all the time from him, standing in the pocket, in the face of pressure, and doing it in terms of providing the arc for his receiver down the field. For UConn, it's Bryant Sheriff's third year starting quarterback. And Randy Edsel, new co coach now and a new philosophy. There's a brand new system. Bryant told us yesterday he loves it. It's a lot more explosive than it was. It is. And I think the thing that Sheriff's has done, he, he's got under control more. And he's benefited from also hitting those big shots down the field. Guess what? That opens up the underneath game. And you'll see it here after the flea flicker. This against Temple to Mayala on the outside, the back shoulder throw. And that makes Randy Etzel very happy as a coach, his quarterback improving. It's his second stint, Chave, as UConn head coach, resulting in a three-win season, two-game win streak. First two-game win streak since 2015. Told us yesterday, more patient this time around. Recruiting player development will be the key to the UConn success story. Now down to Melody Collins on the field. More on Mizzou head coach Barry Odom's method for, for getting the first half of a very tough season and moving on. Right, Mel? Yeah, well, Dave, in order to set the tone for the second half of the season, Barry Odom burned all that went wrong in the first half. Literally, during a team meeting before the Idaho game last week, Bird Odom set ablaze any remnants of the team's first six games. He told us this week he burned scouting reports, game plans, and negative articles on social media, and it ended up being an actual bonfire in the team meeting room. He said that he's six foot, and the flames ended up well over his his head so he knew they had to put it out quick but the message burned loud and clear Dave the past is meaningless and Missouri came out a new team against Idaho last week we'll see if they can keep it rolling tonight against UConn and Mel I know the viewers are wondering there were no cell phones allowed during that uh, bonfire which got a little at hand as Melanie talked about good news though nobody got hurt and Mizzou's moving on weather tonight here at East Hartford it's perfect for college football 62 degrees Little breeze field level, no rain in the forecast. UConn's won the toss, they will defer to the second half. Michael Tarbett will kick off, and Larry Roundtree, the third, deep man to receive for Mizzou. Tigers have not won a road game since beating Arkansas State back in 2015. That's 10 straight losses away from Columbia for Missouri. Maybe that changes tonight. UConn trying to win its third straight and stay hot. Underway from Rensselaer Field. Roundtree ventures out. Spun around. Flags fly from all directions. And he stopped at the 29. Tyler Coyle, one of the star defensive backs, youngsters for UConn, on the special teams stop. Mark Curls is our referee tonight, 13th season SEC crew here in East Hartford. During the return, holding number 38 return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Time now for the Chick-fil-A starting lineup. For the Tigers, junior Drew Locke out of Lee Summit, Missouri, can make all the throws, pro prospect for sure. SEC's leading returning passer from last year. Twice he set Mizzou records this year with six and seven touchdown passes in a game. He can move in a third place all time in Tiger history in passing yards tonight. Career record though, seven and 19. It's only a 27 win percentage. That's got to change, Corey, for Drew Locke and the Tigers 
if he's thinking about a big time move to the next level. Well, you, you're right about that, Dave, and tonight is just the beginning of that process. Ish winner. Feature back, and Locke is throwing out first down. Johnson the catch. Marche Terry escorts him out of bounds. Flag down. Well, one of the guys that's going to be a big part of it is Jonathan Johnson, who just caught the last pass. And we'll see what the call is from the referee. Holding number 81, offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Correction, half the distance to the goal. First down. Albert Okwebunam. Young star tight end from Mizzou, guilty party. Three touchdown catches in the first quarter in that blowout win Mel told us about last week in Columbia, homecoming against Idaho. <laughs> On first and 17, it's winner. On the pitch. Knocked down hard by Vontae Diggs. Yeah, on the other side, Dave, I think the, the big guy to look at tonight is Cole Ormsby, and I think he has to provide consistent pressure getting after the quarterback. He's a very physical football player. Play fake, second down. Pressure from Terry. Deep ball. And Hall can't get up with that one. That's incomplete coverage there from Jordan Swan. Those young defensive backs we told you about for UConn and Randy Edsel this year. That's third down. Four receivers will run routes here for Locke. Time. Witter has a catch. It's Witter. Slides down on the natural grass surface. And he's shy of the marker by about a yard. Gain of five there on the reception from Ish Witter. Well, they're really depending on Koi Boonham to make a block out here on Junior Joseph. Now, he does his job, and you see him slip with the inside-out pursuit. And when I was down on the field before the game, I saw a lot of receivers slipping, and that's going to be something for us to keep our eye on. In fact, Marche Terry in pursuit just now slipped. And for Tony, we know about him, the punter, he puts on a show. For Tony, has that one go right through his hands, and it's going to be a safety. Two points for UConn. And it's a new long snapper tonight, Dave. Drew Wise are really he's kind of replacing a guy that's struggled as well, and James Workman. And for Tony couldn't save this one. Now he saved Whoa. one against Purdue, but he could not save that one from Drew Wise. And I was just wondering who was gonna long snap. <laughs> that was what I was questioning. Was it gonna be Drew Wise or James Workman? Both of those guys have done it this year, and boy, Wise gets off to a poor start. Wow, that was airmail, not even close. So Corey Fatoni, the freshman All-American from a couple years back, will meet now with Drew Wise. We're on the field level watching the punt unit go through warmups, and all the snaps were perfect, but in the game, it's a different story. That was not even close. You got that right, David. We, when we were down there watching, it was surprising that Wise and him seemed to have a pretty good chemistry, and he was getting off some pretty good punts, and that was the first thing we looked at when we were down on the field before the game. Free kick coming up here. Wave on Skeins will be deep to receive for UConn. Looks like they're trying to laugh that off on the sidelines. That's about all you can do. Yeah. That was just not close. Fatoni is 5'11", and that was meant for about a 6'10". <laughs> <Butter. laughs> so the free kick coming here for Tucker McCann, who was suspended last week for the Idaho game, did not kick for Mizzou. Nick Bartolota filled in for him. Free kick from the 20. Gaines from the 13. Speedy freshman for UConn is bottled up at about the 36. Time now for Chick Fly starting lineup for UConn. Huskies led by redshirt senior quarterback Bryant Sheriff, transfer from NC State. Began the year as the number two QB at UConn, played well in the opener against Holy Cross. He's been the man since. He told us yesterday he felt restricted by former coach Bob Yako's offense. Now to Randy Edsel, he likes the fast pace, how the Huskies can open it up. 13 touchdown passes this year. He had seven in all of last season. On first down, Sheriff's time. 
Brought in, Skaines a catch. Knocked out of bounds by Demarcus Acey. And it's, it, yeah, they're just really running a split safety coverage, and he's attacking the safety. And this just shows the improvement of Sheriffs, the accuracy on that throw. He's much more decisive in this game. First down. Herji Mayala can't bring that in incomplete. And one guy that's going to be important is Ryan Vandermark, and he's an impressive athlete. Played volleyball in high school at the Hunt School out of Princeton, New Jersey. And I just like seeing him release on screens and get out in the open field. Only 265 pounds. He's going to be a good one as he grows into his frame. Part of the youth movement at UConn for Randy Edsel in his second stint leading the Husky program. Big changes after only three wins last year. Second down, Herji Mayala has the catch. Hit there by Adam Sparks, true freshman from Mizzou, gate of five. And on the other side, one of the players he'll be going against, Dave, is Marcel Frazier. And I think he has to really step it up over the next couple of games. Now, the last three games a year ago, he had six and a half sacks. He's a very talented pass rusher. They need him to perform at his best tonight. And in fact, on this play, I think he's down inside at the three technique or a defensive tackle position. Third down for UConn. Pressure on Sheriffs, delivers. And Skates can't bring that in. Incomplete. Joshua Bledsoe, Sam linebacker in coverage. It's a good throw, and you want Skeins to be able to pull that in. He dropped one against East Carolina on a screen, but he's a little bit of a body catcher, something I noticed, and that time he tried to catch it with his hands. So that's something to monitor as we move forward. Brett Graham, punter for Randy Edsel and UConn. Make sure freshman from State College, Pennsylvania. Melanie is from State College. Some Penn State fans are interested in that Ohio State game right now, aren't they? <laughs> Grab putts. Rashad Floyd. Fair caught at about the six. Floyd brought back a touchdown last week on a punt return against Idaho. Here it's 2-0 in early safety for UConn. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Verizon, the best network and the best unlimited. And by Chick-fil-A. Start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl. Members that unforgettable 2010 UConn season under Randy Edsel in his first hit here. Huskies co-champs of the Big East are in the automatic bid at the Fiesta Bowl. And matched up with Oklahoma out in Tempe, Arizona. And Missouri, I think, Dave, in this game, they've got to control the line of scrimmage on defense. Their stars have to step up. On the other side, UConn, they've got to force three and outs. Missouri has 14 on the year. Pitch to Ish Ritter. Uh, first down. Physical play along the sideline there with Jamar Summers. Mario Crockett hurt against Georgia. Shoulder surgery with a flag down just prior to the Idaho game. Foul in the middle. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Junior Joseph with a reach there and got Ishwitter's headgear. So plus 15. That's what Missouri needs. You were mentioning Crockett, Corey being out probably for the season, dynamic running back for the Tigers. He really was a very strong back. I think Roundtree can provide some of that strength. Witter, change of pace. What is a senior? Roundtree, the third, a freshman. So first down. Catch. Jamon Moore turns it into a big play for Mizzou. Tigers leading receiver this year, 32nd catch of the season, gain of 21. And you got to tackle on the edge, and I think that's the thing. That when you play Missouri and Jamon Moore, that's what he's best at is making defenders miss on the perimeter. Play fake for lot. Time. Winds up. Carazola pressure. Lock gets away. Keeps it going. 
And the catch made, Okue Bunam. The big tight end rumbles ahead for another big pickup for Mizzou inside the 35. Gain of 14 for the Tigers. You can see the athleticism on the edge. I mean, he's, he's not somebody that you'll see that from a lot, but he can do it. Tigers go fast. Play fake to Ish Witter. Emmanuel Hall, the catch. Missed tackle by Braden Brown. Hall steps out of bounds. As he tried to tiptoe the sideline with some good speed, he is a very fast receiver. Probably the fastest wideout Mizzou has. Well, they need to have a race, because I'd like to see him and Moore go at That's it. That's right. He and J. Mar Moore are special, aren't they? Yeah, they can run. Gain of eight. Josh Heupel, offensive coordinator for Mizzou. Down things up here early. Tigers in a hurry. Play fake. Jamon Moore has a catch. Missed tackle. And then great hustle down the sideline. Tyler Coyle eventually polishes him off. Swan could not make the play on Jamon Moore. It's a gain of 23. Well, this is just one-on-one -on -one with the freshman. You've got to win this matchup if you're more. Yeah. And look at the hesitation. It gets back outside the stiff arm. He's strong, too. Over 200 pounds with the quickness. The ruling on the field of the runner not out of bounds, excuse me, of the runner out of bounds is under further review. Let's take a look. Ryan Matorin, replay official in the press box with us. We'll see exactly what happened there with Jamon Moore along the sideline. It's young secondary, Chief. You got Jordan Swan, true freshman, Richard freshman, and Coyle, Braden Brown, true freshman. They're going to make mistakes. Let's see here. Down the sideline, looking for contact with the paint. What do you think, that right foot there? Left foot? I don't think he's out until about the four. Mm -hmm. I think they've got a pretty good spot. I, I, I'd give them a good job by the crew in terms of, uh, I thought he did a good job of tight roping the sidelines. And there's that balance that we talked about in strength for more. And this is maybe a better look at it. There's a stiff arm. And I don't see anything definitive that would cause that play to be overturned in terms of where he stepped out at. The conclusive video evidence to overturn that. Tyler Cole trying to bring him down. Boy, J. Mon Moore is strong. That's not easy to do. And it will shed Tyler Coyle and pick up some more real estate for Missouri. Well, I think he's what makes the engine go a little bit for this team. Uh, if he can get going, it really makes them tough to stop with the emergence of Hall, who's come out of nowhere this year and, and done what they've expected. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First and goal from the four. As correctly predicted by Mr. Chase. Mark Curls, our referee tonight, confirms it. Tonight's red zone, red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Missouri so far inside the 20. They're the numbers. And they're 40th in the nation in this. And so those numbers speak to them being at least partially productive. They want to get six on this trip. Winner alongside Lock. First and goal. Fade. End zone. Moore. Touchdown. Missouri. Jamon Moore. Six TD catch of the year. And this is Jamar Summers, another NFL prospect. And they're going against each other, and he missed times his jump. And at that point, Lott puts it in a spot where him and Moore, you can see they've worked on that in practice. And that's why he's got the most touchdown passes in the SEC, and he's second in the nation. Jamon Moore continuing to put up numbers. That's his sixth touchdown catch. Tucker McCann is back off the one-game suspension and kicking for Mizzou. It's 7-2. Well, they always ask if you're a Tiger to give me some more. And Locke is getting excited because more gives him just that. Three catches, 48 yards in the drive for Jamon Moore, capped off by the four-yard touchdown grab from Locke. Take a look at tonight's score being road trip facts. Rex are Field East Hartford, open in 2003. Just as UConn was going from the FCS to the FBS, had Great years we saw under Randy Edsel, Big East champs, went to the BCS Fiesta Bowl, 
in 2010, 22 miles. Corey, the autumnal splendor, the rolling hills of Connecticut. Beautiful drive yesterday. We stopped and took some pictures, didn't we? We did, and, and I got to give you and Melanie credit. Y'all are like, you've got to get out and take some pictures because we're about to. <laughs> Y'all did a pretty good job. I almost got hit by one of those cars. You're fine. You, I don't think Thankfully. you would have you wouldn't have minded if I come on <laughs> McCann kicking off the skeins and the freshman from the two Quavon skeins wrestled down at about the 16 Cam Hilton the backup defensive backs for Mizzou on the special teams hit return of 15. Well, last year, Mizzou, uh, last time these teams met, back in 2015 in Columbia, a 9-6 Missouri win. They had a safety against UConn, and UConn returns the favor with the early safety here tonight on the high snap. But Drew Wise looked better on that PAT a moment ago. Sheriffs to the offense, back in the field. Brian Sheriffs has that knocked down, nearly intercepted. Marcel Frazier went up high, got a piece of it, and almost brought it down for a pick six. He did this against Idaho last week. He almost did the same exact thing. And this is what I was talking about with the activity of Frazier and what he can bring to the team. It's one of those players that can disrupt your entire game plan. Second and ten. Sheriffs. Looking for Herji Mayala and Marcus Acey on coverage. Incomplete third and ten here for Brian Sheriffs and UConn. What's the feeling you got, Corey, along with Melanie yesterday sitting down with Brian Sheriffs? We've talked to him a lot over the years. He seems really matured. He does. I, I think he's matured because of what has gone on and he, his confidence within this system. He's seeing success. And I want to see on this whether he throws in the middle of the field. That's a place he's gotten better at this year. Big moment here. Lots of pressure. Gets that one off. Mensa has a catch. Kevin Mensa with a flag down. This might come back. A marker. There are two markers down at the 26 and 31. It's a gain of 20 if it stands for UConn. Kevin Mensa, the true freshman from Cheshire, Connecticut. Been a big factor this year for the Huskies. Personal foul. Face mask, number 17 defense, away from the ball prior to the pass. 15-yard penalty is tacked on to the end of the run. First down. Demarcus Acey, sophomore from Dallas, guilty party. Big tack on play. Wow. All the way into Mizzou territory. First down, match play, Mensa, the carry. Runs right, good pickup. Therese Hall knocks him out of bounds there for Missouri. Missed tackle by AC. Well, Cam DeGeorge, number 70, you're gonna watch him pull around the edge and watch the block that he makes. He blocks on AC, and that allows Mensa to get around the corner again. So DeGeorge showing his versatility as well. Second down, Sheriffs keeps Sheriffs first down and slides the safety. Right in front of Anthony Sheryls, closest to him for Mizzou. A threat to run at all times. And one of the more physical quarterbacks I've ever seen. Yeah, he, he's definitely tough, and he's taking some shots that you would question over the years, but he doesn't mind taking them. Gain of eight, first down. Play fake. Sheriffs in trouble. Gets away. Brian Sheriffs. A nice pick up again. TJ Warren, sophomore from Conyers, Georgia, knocks him down. Second and short. Menso tries the right side. And is shy. He needs the 26 for the UConn first down. No game for Mensa. Arkel Newsom is out for UConn. We talked about Crockett for Mizzou being out for the season. Newsom has a ligament injury in his shoulder and could be lost for the season. He's the Huskies' leading receiver and really most dynamic offensive player. Key injuries tonight. 
Third and three. Pressure. Kale Garrett was bringing the heat. And the pass is incomplete. Looking for Tyreek Beals. See Garrett on the inside stun and the blitz, and he's able to get to him and make Sheriffs get rid of the ball early. But it was a pretty good break outside by Gerard Alton. And that in itself, if he did throw it on time, he might have had a chance to pick it off. 47 yard attempt here for Michael Tarbot. Six of nine on the year, only a long of 42 on the season. Did make two against Tulsa last week from 35 and 28 yards. Whistles first. First charge timeout, UConn. Almost a delay of game there. Brett Lashley, new offensive coordinator, part of the turnover and staff with Randy Edsel taking over for Bob Diaco. Talks with Bryant Sheriffs. From the spirited start through the fatigue finish, find out what it takes for the toughest competitors to complete the most grueling obstacles in the Midwest. It's America's toughest mutter tomorrow night at 9 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Guys, UConn was kind of forced to take that timeout. Vandermark ran off, didn't realize what was going on, and then Tommy Hopkins had to tell him, hey, it's a field goal, run back out there. True freshman, Mel, we talked about it. It's a big theme for Andy Edsel. He and Rhett Lashley, his offensive coordinator, have decided guys like Vandermark are just going to play and take their lumps and learn this year and develop and not sit behind seniors like Tommy Hopkins. So you'll get that. All right, here's Tarbin off the timeout. From 47, wide right, and oh good. To keep this a 7-2 game. Tarbot had been six of nine of the season. A couple against Tulsa and a big win for UConn last week, but this time he is wide to the right. No good. The world's toughest Cowboys ride for their legacies and move one step closer to lifting the gold buckle. Don't miss round one of the 2017 PBR World Finals Wednesday night at 10 Eastern from Las Vegas right here on CBS Sports Network. Let's go back down to Melanie Collins. Well, Dave, Coach Odom told us this week that Drew Locke's football IQ has skyrocketed this year. He said he's really a student of the game and loves the sport. He's extremely competitive. And Locke was actually a great basketball player in high school. He had offers from a few of the final four teams at the time. And he's become a great leader for this team, especially verbally. He said it's not always rah-rah. He's not afraid to get after a guy. And Coach Heupel said it's the last three weeks. He's really shown a ton of improvement. He's way more comfortable and confident in the pocket, Dave. Already is number three all-time Mizzou history with his passing effort tonight. Emmanuel Hall on a little jet sweep with a flag down, knocked down by Marche Terry of UConn. Let's find out what happened. Gain of two if it stands for Hall. Locke certainly has developed into one of the top quarterbacks nationally. Twenty-four touchdown passes this year for the junior. Personal foul, face mask, number 25 defense, away from the football, 10 yard, 50 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Tyler Coyle, he's a retro freshman from Windsor, Connecticut. Remember, Demarcus Acey had that same off the ball, away from the play, face mask call for Missouri earlier tonight. Got a little bit of a look at it there. He was. Actually trying to get off of the block, and that's one of the reasons why his hand got up. And I've had that happen to me before, trying to get off of a block. Sometimes your hand gets a little bit too high. So first down for Locke. Hall lost his footing, still made a nice catch. And eventually put down by Swan and company. Some help there from Tyler Coyle. Well, just watch the room that you're seeing outside from these receivers and these defensive backs. There's a lot of room on the outside. Look at all the room up both sides. You know, those throws will be there all day. Play fake to Ishwitter. Lock. Deep ball. Jamar Moore runs in to Swan and a P.I. Definition of pass interference. Wasn't looking back at the ball. And flags fly from all directions. It'll be a call against Jordan Swan. Well, as the ball is in the air. Pass interference, number 30, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down.
We got a step on him, and as you can see, you, you talked about him not getting his head around. The contact was made with the ball being in the air. And I think that is a big thing that actually drew the flag. And, and right now, they're working on him a little bit. He's a freshman, and they know that. And you've got a 1,000-yard receiver in Jamon Moore, and they're finding that matchup right away. First down. Lock going to run. Got some room and slides down in front of Marche Terry and does have a first down for Missouri. Well, they're reading Luke Carrizola, number 15. And as they have the cross block from Okoye Boonham, he just takes off and nobody's there. First down, Ish Witter makes some tacklers miss. Ish Witter gets physical inside the 10. It's another Missouri first down. It'll be first and goal. I like that hard physical run by the senior from Tampa. And it's well, first and goal. Mizzou on the move. Winner carries again. Plows through traffic. Ends up at about the four yard line. Tackle made by Darian Beavers, true freshman from Cincinnati, Coleraine High School at Powerhouse and Cincy. Young Husky team. A lot of key spots. We're learning on the job here in 2017. Second down. Lock. End zone. Okua Benelam has got it. Who a Boonam touchdown for Missouri. The tight end had three last week against Idaho. And he's got his first tonight. Four yard strike. Well, you're not seeing it from this angle, but he reset to find out whether it was man coverage. And we might be able to take a look back. That's the IQ that Mel just got through referring to. He actually got to play from the sideline. He saw they were in man coverage, and then he moved them to the other side of the ball, and then he won with the matchup. So that was all about Drew Locke and his growth as a quarterback. Tucker McCann, it's a PAT. Both touchdown passes from Locke to Moore and Okue Budam. Four yards out. Tigers are roaring, Corey. Katie Perry. I know you love Katie Let's Perry. Let's roar. Nobody better than her. Zoo looking good. What a young talent in Columbia this year, Albert Okue Boonam. Albert Oze, they know him, retro freshman from Springfield, Illinois. We talked with Josh Heupel, offensive coordinator from Mizzou this week. They love his pass catching ability. And six touchdown catch of the year. That ties him among all FBS tight ends. That's a serious young talent, Corey. We've got some young studs out here today. Well, he needs to go buy a Drew Locke lunch. Because <laughs> he moved him over, got the matchup for him against Marche Terry. And, and again, I mean, we just we, uh, we just heard about that on the sideline, about the IQ from Drew Locke. He moves him in the pre-snap after getting the play from the sidelines. And you see him communicating on the sidelines now. I think that was a, you couldn't have seen a better example of what he did in the pre-snap ended up working in a post snap for a Kui Boonham. Touchdown. McCann kicking off. Skeins will not venture out. Takes a knee, touchback for UConn. Talked about the numbers. Just needed 42 yards tonight, which he has surpassed already in this first quarter. 94 passing yards, a couple of touchdowns tonight, plus that 10-yard run. If Locke can be a threat with his legs, Corey, the RPO offense that Josh Heifel is engineered at Mizzou, watch out. Dangerous team. Mensa gets a carry on first down. Freshman has cut back and gets drilled. Brandon Lee. His career best game against South Carolina last year for Missouri. Had 16, uh, 11 tackles in 2016 against the Gamecocks. Mets again on second down. Terry Beckner Jr. has his first tackle. One of the top pro prospects in our game tonight. 
UConn with this higher paced offense for Rhett Lashley, their new coordinator. Tested playing from behind. Big early third down here. Well, the last time they had this third and short, they ran the quick outs. It's third and three now, and they're bringing in Tyler Davis. So you may have a little bit of misdirection. You could end up having uh, some type of zone read. You could end up having a sprint out. There's a couple different things they like to do in these situations. Third down. That's a big run. Jason Thompson, the redshirt junior from Shelton, Connecticut. Going to get some more touches with Arkell Newsom out indefinitely. Gain of 10, first down. Well, that was the zone read, but they pull around number 70, Cam to George, and also Tyler Davis, who had just checked into the game. So that was a version of their zone read, and they went back towards the slot formation. And now they're back in another two tight end set as Davis stays in the game. Play fake. To Dixon, too tall for Bloom, the tight end. It was open around the 40 yard line. And a bad misfire there for Sheriffs. Enjoyed meeting with Rhett Lashley, the new offensive coordinator at UConn, came from Auburn. You like his philosophy, Corey? I do. I think he's got the look of a future head coach. I mean, just talking with them yesterday, how under control in terms of what they were trying to do. He has a purpose to how they play offense here, and you can see it translating to the field. Second down, Skeins. Got to pass it. Kayvon Skeins with a lot of it's incomplete, looking for Beals at about the 19 by himself. And incomplete. Well, Chuck went up for Rhett Lashley. <laughs> You're going to see Ty Tyreek Beals up at the top of the screen, wide open. Skeins has him, and he just can't get to the football. And he's under a little bit of heat from Kale Garrett. So give Garrett an assist on that play for the errant pass. UConn worked on that play in their indoor facility yesterday during the walkthrough. And you talked about that. But he completed the pass <laughs> yesterday. That's a walkthrough. <laughs> there was no defense. <laughs> it wasn't a real game. Oh, Timeout. Man. Called by Missouri. A little more on Red Lashley coming from Auburn. The backup quarterback. A lot of injury problems in his day at Arkansas. It was a great high school QB. Set, step, set state records in Arkansas. A tremendous high school career. Coming from the SEC, facing the SEC tonight. On the Gus Malzahn for 10 years. He did some really good work down at Arkansas State. A lot of people forget that Malzahn went down there with the head coach, and he had him down right. there with him. And you know, I actually had a chance to go down there and watch him run his offense down there, and it was pretty impressive. Just some of the different philosophies that he brings to the table. You've got misdirection. You're going to close down formations. You're going to have your quarterbacks on the move. And as he continues to build his program, you'll see this UConn offense make more and more strides. Now it's third and ten. I'm still looking for some inside routes at some point. That's the best route in this down and distance for sheriffs. Third down, Missouri dials up a blitz. Pass over the middle, McLean makes the grab of the 45. First down, UConn. McLean's first touch and grab of the night, gain of 13. Well, this is what I'm talking about. You're gonna get the, the dig route inside by McLean, and you can see he puts it on the money. A little bit low, but that's what McLean and Sheriffs connect on. Sheriffs keeps, gets hit hard by Jordan Harold, Richard senior from St. Louis. Former Division II star at Northwest Missouri State. Walked on to Mizzou, wanted to be a Tiger, play D1 football. Now he's a captain for the Tigers. That's quite a story. Had a full ride at the D2 level. Walked on to Missouri. Second down. Sheriff's throwing. McLean has a catch and set backwards hard. Well, T.J. Warren's from Rockdale County High School, and he rocked him on that play. Mm. I mean, that's one of those hits that you kind of you kind of wait to see who's going to make the first big hit. Inner Warren. That was it. Wow. Whoa. Get Fiscal's <laughs> made Hopkins. <laughs> but as wow, he runs over Adam Sparks and leaves him in the dust. <laughs> Tremendous physical run. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Sparks is a freshman, too. Sheriffs keeps. 
on that option as dragged down by Anthony Sheryls. They've been incorporating this zone read more with Sheriffs. That's why I mentioned it a little bit early. With Newsom out, he's got to become more a part of the run game. He was a big part of it last week against Tulsa, and you'll see this continue to be a theme throughout the night. Manson feature back, Hopkins out. Second down, Sheriffs, hit as he throws it. From that's on the wheel route, that's incomplete. AC on coverage for Mizzou. Watch him stand in the pocket and take that hit for Walter Palmore. And man, I don't <laughs> I tell you what, we, we've had some highlight film collisions already, but again, it's third down and and, and now we're going to see what this stack look. Will they go back to the quick game or go to the sprint out? One handed grab there. Good play by Sheriffs on a snap that was there. Brad Sheriffs running it. He gets run over by Therese Hall. Well, they went to the sprint out, and he kept the ball instead of throwing it. And so now you've got a decision to make with the field goal kicker in Tarbit who just missed the field goal. So uh, I think now with you down 14-2, to two, it's a no-brainer. And, and they're going to maybe look for Hergie Mayala at the top of the screen. Big play, fourth and five. Randy Edsel wants to go for it here. you, you got to get Mayala involved, Dave, at some point. This is a one-on-one -on -one at the top. So Chips on fourth down, looks for Mayala, but low throw in the dirt. And incomplete on a sticks route, just as Corey Cole. Reggie Mayala out of Quebec, Canada, was the intended receiver. Not a good throw. Well, it was a good coverage by AC, who slips as well. And I, I think footing will continue to be something to, to monitor. Uh, was not, you're right, it wasn't a great throw, but AC disrupted him off the line of scrimmage. And I think that's a big reason why the ball would look like it was a little bit worse than it really was. Corey Chavis loves track and field, so it's time now for the Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Player of the Game. It's Emmanuel Hall. Look at those track stats. I got something for you. 2011, to add on to that great stat by our crew downstairs, the AAU Junior Olympic National Champion in the high jump. He's a six foot eight high jumper. Jonathan Johnson. I love it. On the end around. Coyle bumps him out of bounds. Hall's a good one. Tops of the FBS in yards per catch. 28.38 per grab entering this game here tonight in East Hartford. Second down. Lock. Some pressure. Looks for Johnson. Backpedaling. Makes a great catch in UConn territory. Summers closest to him. All the way to the 40. It's a gain of 35. When you see how they flood the zone and it takes Summers out of the picture, He's going towards the inside route, and there's another route coming up the sidelines right behind him. In this pace affecting UConn, you see players going off the field, Cam Stapleton running off the field, Luke Carrizola running on the field. This is blazing fast, the pace of Missouri. Lock 11 for 12 here in the first quarter, 129 yards and two touchdowns. Wow. Here's Locke again throwing. He's been on all night. Another catch. Dominic Collins, senior from Lake Forest, California. JC transfer has his first grab of the evening. And this, the, first, the last time they scored a touchdown, or even, there was a 71st drive out of 95 drives this year that was under two minutes. So they're trying to get you off balance. And Foley Fadakazi just left the game. Off again at 17. Roundtree, the carry. Larry Roundtree, the third, gets physical. And backs up Marche Terry a couple yards. We are seeing some very physical runs here. Lots of contact tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, Marche Terry made a good tackle. I mean, that's an outstanding tackle for a six foot four guy to bend that low to make a tackle. Very good tackle by Terry. On first down, play fake end zone again. Touchdown, Missouri. Albert Oku, A. Boonam has done it for a second time in the game here tonight. And if you add up the first quarter of Idaho and UConn, that's five total touchdown catches for Albert O. Well, you're going against a lot of freshmen, and that was Braden Brown, and his eyes got caught up in the backfield off of the play fake inside. They scored on that route five times or four times last week. It took turns scoring on the route. They brought in Kendall Blanton, and he scored on the route, and they scored on the route again. 
PAT from McCann. Locke is 13 of 14, 155, and three scores already, Chase. And they keep running the same route. They take it from Idaho all the way to Connecticut, and they score again. Okue Bunam last week had the first career multi-TD game. That was against Idaho homecoming in Columbia. He's got another one here tonight. He is tearing up defenses. Seven touchdown catches to lead all FBS tight ends. Only a freshman for Missouri. McCann kicks the Quavon skein. Stop it. Takes a knee. Well, we talked about Braden Brown, and this is where Brown is at right here. And you're going to see Koi Boonham. He's going to come up and run the route. But as you can see, Dave, there's nobody in the middle of the field. So as you come up with that play fake, there's no help. You've got to be disciplined with your eyes and look at your keys. And your key is Okoye Boonham on that play if you're Braden Brown. He's an excellent player. I think he's going to be, you know, one of those players that they can build on. He won four straight state championships in high school at Fort Mill High School. But, you know, he's a young player that's still learning on the job. First down for Sheriff. Spence up. Incomplete. Right off his chest. So Missouri 55 points in the first quarter of the last two games after absolutely demolishing Idaho for the Sun Belt Conference last week. And tonight it's UConn's turn, it appears, for the American Conference. And this is O'Brien Sheriff. He has to settle the team down and be an extension of his offensive coordinator, Rhett Lashley. On second down, McLean has the catch. Kale Garrett drops him. You've got to convert here. I mean, because Missouri coming into this game was given 127th in the country in third down defense. You're giving up almost 50% conversion rate on third down. You've got to find a way. And this is where you may get the quick outs or the crossers, quick outs preferably for UConn here. Here's third down. Sheriffs under duress. Tyreek Beals has the catch. Knocked out of bounds by Cam Hilton. And that pickup will move the chains out to about the 37 in the final moments here in the first quarter. That's what you have to do. You have to execute. Those routes, they cut down their splits, and basically those are the complementary routes. And it's tough for the defense to adjust if you're playing any type of man coverage. On first down, Sheriffs. Incomplete. OG Myala, intended receiver. Logan Cheadle on coverage. His uncle's Don Cheadle. I mean, does everyone not love Don Cheadle? I love actor. Don Cheadle. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> he's one of everybody. Ocean's 11 series, <laughs> Iron Man. I mean, come on, he's awesome. Don has not been to a Missouri game yet, but he has been tweeting out some, some love for his relative Logan Cheadle. Second out, Sheriffs, end of the quarter, deep ball. Boom! Perji Mayala on the go route down the sideline. Ending the first quarter in style for UConn. It was a double move, a slant and go, and he got it. You, you just talked about his uncle. Well, I don't think he's not going to be tweeting that one out. End of the first quarter. 21 to Missouri, but UConn on the move. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. What's happening next week? It's Halloween. Can't wait. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the fight to find a cure marches on. Join CBS Sports Network for the Auto Nation Cure Bowl coming this December. Only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports, December 16th from Camping World Stadium in Orlando. UConn, Dave, is uh, 12th in the nation in terms of being able to really execute on 40-plus yard passing plays. Here's a slant and go to Herdy Mayala. You can see the move that he makes. There's a big reason why he's averaging 18 yards per reception, and now they're in the red zone. First play, second quarter off the 45-yard reception from Mayala. Two tight ends set here for UConn. Sheriffs. 
And off to Nate Hopkins, another freshman for the Huskies from Flower Mound, Texas, in the Dallas Metroplex. Stopped by Trey Williams. And they need to get seven points or six points, whatever it is. You, you've got to be able to come down and, and at least get that out of this drive uh, so you can get your fans more into it and you get your team's confidence up. Hopkins has been effective this year. He's got seven rushing touchdowns. Against the UConn in the last six years. He's great in the red zone. And Markel Newsom, someone's got to step up. Play fake. Trouble. Terry Beckner Jr. right in the face of Brian Sheriffs. Wow, that's not fun. Well, Beckner, you can see nobody blocked him. And, and, and as good as he is, when he doesn't get blocked, that, that's pretty easy <laughs> to finish off. And, and that was just miscommunication with the UConn offensive line. And now you've got a third down and 14. Uh, you can see a shot of Newsom on the sidelines. But he can't help Sheriffs on this play. Jason Thompson feature back. Sheriff's check with me with Rhett Lashley. His offensive coordinator and avoids delay a game by calling a timeout. Second charge timeout, UConn. 30 second timeout. Markel Newsom, second leading rusher for UConn this year. And the top Husky receiver is out, Tamari Crockett. Shoulder surgery just prior to the Idaho game last week for Mizzou, probably out for the season. Could be come back potentially for a bowl game around the holidays if the Tigers can win five or six. And get there. Newsom possibly lost for the rest of his career. He's really been the heart and soul, Corey, of this UConn offense for years. He has, and what he what you lose when he's out of the game, a lot of times what they'll do is just give him a little bit of a swing pass and he'll get out on the edge. And really, he's a big reason why he's the team's leading receiver. Look at this. 407 yards receiving for a running back. So it makes a, a big difference when your running back is averaging 18 yards a catch. Hurt in the first quarter against Tulsa last week. The ligaments between the clavicle and sternum were torn in that exciting victory of the Golden Hurricane. The last second TD attempt for Tulsa was knocked aside by Junior Joseph. Preserved the win. Third down. Off the timeout. Bryant Sheriffs delivers. Mayala has the catch. AC wrestles him out of bounds. Got to the 15. Fourth down coming up. I think they're going to go for it. And Again. It, yeah, man. Wonder whether or not if your defensive coordinator, Barry Odom, really, he calls a lot of the shots for Missouri. Will he bring some pressure? It looks like they're going to play maybe some man coverage right here. Big fourth down call. Sheriffs delivers. Catch made at the five. And the Huskies keep the drive going. Gain of 10. That was a gutsy call by Randy Edsall and his staff, Rhett Lashley, and a pretty good catch by Quavon Skanes. Throw a ball like that. If you're, you're sheriffs, you know your team needs you to come up with a big throw, and you, you knife one in there on fourth down like that. That, that says a lot about his maturity. Look for the sprint out in this area of the field, Dave. Huskies needed that, Corey, no question. On first and goal. Sheriffs, elusive. Dale Garrett, a piece of him. And eventually knocked down by the defense. Well, it's unfortunate, but it's Frazier. And he gets off the edge, and you get to clean up by Chino off the other side. But he had something. And if he could have just gotten outside, I kind of had a feeling they were going to run that sprint out again down in this part of the field because that's where he's most comfortable in the red zone is on the edges. So look for that the rest of the night. Mensa on the shift. Sheriff's trouble again, Barry. Lee got there. Marcel Frazier as well. And Brandon Lee sandwiched Bryant Sheriffs. Well, guess who else was looking for the sprint out? Missouri. And there's Frazier again. And Lee comes on the backside. They've got it cut. They know. You, you can see the discipline by Frazier on the edge. He knows that he's trying to get out to his right. And a lot of the sprint outs have been to his right. We've got a bunch formation on this next play. 
and he's got to identify whether or not it's man coverage up here at the top of the screen. Loss of seven, third and goal. There's Sheriffs with some pressure. Mayala, the back shoulder throw. And no flag. AC on coverage. Fourth and goal. Let's see what Coach Ezel's got in mind here. Well, he saw he had man coverage down here, and it's against AC, the biggest corner that they have. And I thought he did a good job of playing through the hands. You don't have to always turn back. You can play through as long as there's not any contact being made. You don't have to necessarily look back all the time. You can't play through the hands. And AC did just that on that play. And he pretty much locked down Mayala. Timeout called by Missouri. Second charge timeout, Missouri. 30 second timeout. Really nice hour long sit down. Well, with Melanie yesterday in stores at the UConn campus yesterday. Through the years, well, I played for Frank Maloney at Syracuse. At 79 was the last year before the Carrier Dome, and Joe Morris got things going okay. in Central New York. Long Look at that Cuse football staff jacket. That's vintage, Corey. UConn head coach, all-time wins leader, Husky history, brought them to the Fiesta Bowl in 2010. Then Maryland, they did have two bowl seasons there, but overall things didn't go well. Let go midway in the 2015 season. Lions consultant in the NFL last year. Told us yesterday he learned a lot from Jim Caldwell in Detroit. He has, and one of the things that he learned from him was just about the steadiness of Jim Caldwell. And sometimes, you know, he said almost he, he felt like that learning from some other coach sometimes is the best thing you can do as a coach it helps you grow well i don't know how much more he needed to grow he's, he's one heck of a coach you call it a sabbatical tarvin has got this one from 30 yards out for randy edsel michael tarvin one for two and yukon has three more on the board they got something they needed that First half, head-to-head -head with Missouri at the SEC. Now, this is cool. November 18th, we'll be in Boston. Iconic Fenway Park plays host of these UConn Huskies and the Boston College Eagles of the ACC. What a scene that's going to be played amongst the backdrop of the Green Monster and the home of the Red Sox. It'll be our pleasure to bring you BC UConn from Fenway three weeks from today at 7 Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network. The fans, Fenway Park, Corey, they're getting it ready. Now the Red Sox season over, knocked off by the Astros in the playoffs. Managerial change there. It's all about football, Fenway. I can't wait to watch that game. Yeah, I tell you what, Boston College, you've been, you've been checking them out. Demolished Florida State <laughs> last night. That wasn't even close. Man, boy, they've got a, the, the young quarterback playing well. Uh, you really have to like the direction of that program, and they always play defense. We know that. Tarbin will kick to Roundtree, the third. Short kick, checks up, and around to the third, does a nice job to grab that at the 16. Drew Locke, 14 of 15, 160 yards, three scores, no pick scoring, wow, effective. He has been effective, and I think most of it goes to the red zone. All of these plays in the red zone, finding his matchups, and listen, if, if, at some point, teams, when you play Missouri, you're going to have to protect the middle of the field in the red zone. It's really been an issue the last couple of weeks for both Idaho and then UConn tonight, and he's taking advantage. If you're going to give him layups, that's where that football IQ is coming in. I I'm going to take them. He's a basketball player, as Melanie talked about, so I'm sure he's got a pretty good vert. Now, maybe not like Eric Dungy. Well, that's uh, Syracuse, that, that would be a good contest. First down, uh, another completion. Johnson has the catch. Marche Terry trying to catch up with him and does. Wrestle him down at about the 30. First down for the Tigers. Gain of 13. Barry Odom's offense is cooking here, Corey. And look at the time on all of those. That's what you got to look at. 120, 140. Uh, that's per their average. They get it done quickly. Vlock trying to stay red hot. Johnson down the seam was open. Summers and Terry on coverage for UConn. Second incompletion of the night for Drew Locke. You can see the arm strength because he was trying to get the ball in between Terry and Summers, and, and that's where you can see the next level type of throw. Because to throw that type of pass, you have to put it on a line, and he, he probably put a little bit too much steam on it, just a bit. Pro arm, no question about that. Roundtree to third. Nice bounce out for Larry Roundtree. 
First down and then some. Vontae Diggs finally escorts him out of bounds, but I like the stop and go for Roundtree, the freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina. That's the big reason why they have him as a kick returner. And you can see the wide receivers out blocking 17, Nate Brown, excuse me, Rashad Floyd, number 17, made a good block. And at 25, Kevin Murphy is down and shaken up for UConn. Redshirt sophomore from Westchester, Pennsylvania, outside Philly. That would be a pretty big loss. I think he's one of their better rotational interior defensive linemen. He's the guy that gives Foley Fadakazi some breathers. So if you lose him, it affects your depth. Seven tackles this year. Eight tackles in a sack last year for Kevin Murphy. Defensive front, we thought coming into the game for Billy Crocker, the first year defensive coordinator for UConn, would have a real chance to be a difference maker, but Drew Locke and this Mizzou offense has picked the defense apart. Well, they've spread them out, and, and they've made it a space game. And what they've done is they've incorporated Johnson on the first play of the game. It was a screen to Johnson. You just saw a screen a second ago, and then you all of a sudden now, he's spreading your defense laterally from sideline to sideline, and it negates your defensive line, particularly when you have a three-man front. You've got three defensive linemen. So at some point, if you're Billy Crocker, you may have to bring some pressure. Murphy being checked out. First down, Mizzou. Play fake to Roundtree. Floyd has the catch. And Coyle wrestles him out of bounds. Rashad Floyd. There's Josh Heupel, one of our finalists for the Heisman Trophy. And Mizzou's offensive coordinator. He felt in our discussion this week that the Tigers are really ready to bust out on the road after that impressive game against Idaho last week. Official timeout here. Chain gang getting reset. Well, pick up of nine yards. Looks like on first down. Second down and one. You can do whatever you want. You can run the football. The chains had moved to determine the down. It is second down and half yard to go. Second and half yard. Call this a waste down, Dave. You can do whatever you want. Take to a it. shot here. Take a shot. Take, take plenty of them. <laughs> Every time you get second and one, because the, the reason why I say that is because, it, listen, even if, if you want to run and try to get the first down, they're spread out all over the field. Lock on second down. Play fake. Floyd to drop at a 15 incomplete. Junior Joseph dropping back on coverage there against Rashad Floyd. He had a punt return for a touchdown and his first career TD catch against Idaho last week. And this reminds me of the Kentucky game. He had a drop on a slant going across the middle of the field in that game on third down and five. So now it's third down and one. And I believe you've got a challenge if you're defensive coordinator Billy Crocker right here because you don't want them to just stand up and throw a screen. Third and short. Round through the third. Has the first down off right tackle. Pounds ahead for the necessary real estate. Marche Terry and Chris Britton on the stop for UConn. Gain of four. And they're running behind their big guys on that side. That's Trey Boris Sims and also Paul Adams. Those are the two best run blockers to me up front. And, and they move bodies. Look, 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 look at Sims. I mean, he's from East St. Louis High School in Illinois. You, you, you think you're going to just, hey, you better be ready to, to, to put your feet in the sand against him. Mm. He's a good one. First down, play fake for Locke. Looks deep, goes to the progression, lost his footing for a moment, hit as he throws, incomplete. Now they got to see Junior whether Joseph with pressure. Is he out of the tackle box and then that? I guess so. There was nobody in the area, I'll tell you that. No granite call. No, our referee Mark Curls explaining to the crowd. So second down. Lock. Throw. Catch again. Jay Mon Moore. Make that uh, a Brown catch. A Brown Retro Jr. from Swanee, Georgia. This is his first grab of the night. Gain of 13, first down Mizzou.
Brown again has a catch. Coyle has him. And Jamar Summers tries to get physical as well, along with Jordan Swan. If you don't want to press the receivers as they get closer to this part of the field in the red zone, at least bring your off coverage a little bit closer. And I'm talking about the cornerbacks on the outside, both of these guys. Get to the point where you're not, you know, 10 yards off, so they can't just stand up and throw it. Second down for Missouri. RPO. Lock gets in trouble. Pressure Carrizola. Ball is down. Luke Carrizola, the hustle. To grab the loose ball. Officials are saying he is down, though, and no fumble. Says Mark Curls, the referee. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. Let's see. Now, maybe that left knee did come down. Contact point. Yeah, there's the knee. Yep, ball's in his hand. Great call. Great call by Mark Curls, our white hat referee tonight. He's down right there. Lost 17, though, for Missouri. Third and 23. Good pressure from Luke Carrizola, the senior. Screen set up. Floyd has the catch. Stop by Coyle. It's a good tackle by Tyler Coyle. Uh, you know, he's one, he's, he, you know, he's one of those players that is going to be a player on the come. Now, he's already taken one interception to the house this year, and that tackle forces a field goal and, 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 and keeps you in the game. Six of eight for McCann. He violated team rules, was not announced publicly what he did, but missed the Idaho game last week. Back tonight. Sophomore from O'Fallon, Illinois, outside St. Louis from 37. He's true. Nails it for Missouri. Tigers haven't won a road game since 2015. They are playing very well away from Columbia tonight. Field goal for Tucker McCann. Let's take a look at this week's AP poll top 10 powered by Ram Trucks. Oh, Melanie Collins. Ugh. Penn State has lost to Ohio State. I'm depressed. Late JT Barrett scored 39 38. And how about TCU on the road losing at Ames to Iowa State 14 7. So the first college football playoff poll comes out Tuesday. It's a shakeup, Melanie. And I believe you and Corey had a little wager. We had a wager game. going, and Corey, I have to say, I lost. I'm warming up down here to run the steps <laughs> next week. Oh, I'm so disappointed, though. I feel like Penn State's looked like more, more like a complete team each week. But my one worry all season was that offensive line, and I think that showed tonight. McSorley had no time to attempt to come back there at the end. Well, I mean, I, I, I'd have to admit, I, I was getting a little bit worried. I thought that <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't lie about that. And, and I got to take, the, I got to take the onus off of Penn State, and, and let's give Iowa State some credit. Mel, I know you're dealing with that down there, so we've, we've got we to at least take a little bit of the pain away from that and talk about Iowa State's big victory. Matt Thank Campbell. Thank you. Please take the pain away. Touch back there. Brett Lashley of Dallas, the next play. All right, what is the bet exactly? Everyone wants to know, what was the wager? Go ahead, Chief. Well, you know what? I was going to have to admit, finally, that, in fact, they were the best team in the country, which they still may be. And, in fact, Mel, I got some good news. That loss won't hurt you. Still have a legitimate shot in, in terms of getting to the playoffs. But it's going to come down to Ohio State, and you know what they're, they're going to have to do moving forward. To answer the question, she has to run steps at FAU next week. Okay? Yeah, I'm trying to get off of that. I, I know. You were a little evasive there. I wanted to be clear. What? Dixon has the catch for UConn. That would That's be incomplete, a, rather. It's incomplete. I think that'll be a breeze for her. She. I'm not sure she's ever been to FAU Stadium. West Palm. It's actually pretty big. So, are well, you making the whole thing? Ice or? skates, she snow, snowboards. I mean, she does a little oh, bit. Oh, she's of a tremendous athlete. So, I mean, I don't think she's I'm worried not about denying that, steps. but I think we're going to have the cameras rolling for that one. She's Sorry, Mel. Tough one tonight. Man, it was tough for, for Penn State. Here at second and 10, Keon Dixon not make that catch for UConn. You know, the Huskies in a big hole against Missouri, the SEC. Tigers looking strong for a second straight week. Hopkins a carry. Beckner got a piece of him, then did with one hand. Bring him down. That's how strong Terry Beckner Jr. is. 305 pound junior from East St. Louis. And what a recruiting coup he was. I mean, think about it. The number one player pretty much in the country. 
number two on some people's boards, who, what, what have you. I mean, and this has kind of been his best best year so far, and they're expecting even more moving forward. Third down. Sheriffs. Oh, yeah. Beckner Jr. almost has the pick. And he drops it. It's incomplete. He'll get the pass broken up. But Terry Beckner just about a little dab for you. <laughs> has the interception and a pick six. What an athlete. And this was the one weakness that I thought he had, and that was running the line games a little bit. I thought sometimes he lacked energy. That time he looped around, got his hands up, and you'll see him come around late, really beating the block of Brendan Beckery. And what an athletic play. That's why you were considered the top player in the country coming out of high school. Overcoming two season ending knee injuries. Graham punts. Shot Floyd. Watch that bounce in front of him. And grabs it on the move. And Eddie Hahn on special teams makes the play. 38 yard punt for Brett Graham of UConn. No touchdown this time for Rashad Floyd, but things look really good for Mizzou. Kick off your weekend with an AFC showdown. The Buffalo Bills battle of New York Jets light up tonight. For Thursday Night Football on NFL Network. Brad Smith, former Missouri great, one of the all-time QBs in Tiger history. 8,644 passing yards, number two to Chase Daniel. 56 touchdown passes, number two. He played for both the Jets and the Bills. Yeah, what a player he was. To even being mentioned in the same breath with Brad Smith and Chase Daniel gives credence to what Drew Locke has been able to accomplish at this school. And tonight has been no different. He's had several of these huge games. And he's a player that just continues to play football and look to improve. He's had a great game so far tonight. This winner has the catch. Dante Diggs. Make sure he stays down. It's out to the 35. It's a loss of two. They're for Missouri. So now if you're UConn, what you're thinking is, okay, it's about five minutes and 55 seconds to go. We got to get that first three and out. They haven't forced one all night. Ishwitter on a carry. Gets around Diggs this time. He and Junior Joseph hot in pursuit. Diggs makes the tackle. And out to the 44 yard line or so. He's gained a 10. Monte Diggs, what a story. Second leading tackler. Very difficult personal life. Homeless for a while in high school. Lived out of a van. Amazing story to overcome such adversity. Third down. Play fake to Ishwitter. Okue Boonham has the catch. Wrestled down by Tyler Coyle. Into Yukon territory. First down, Missouri. Passing yards, top 15. Passing yards allowed last. 129th in the FBS for Yukon and new defensive coordinator Billy Crocker. 217 passing yards already tonight. For Drew Lott and three touchdowns, he's 21 of 25 passing. So, <laughs> big edge for the Tigers. Well, just take a look at the coverages that they're running. You can start seeing some of the guys and how far they are backed off. I mean, all around the screen, you can see there's a lot of room for them to operate. And Lott tries again. Deep ball, Johnson. Braden Brown on coverage. Another freshman in the back end for UConn. Out of Cumberland, Maryland, won four straight state high school titles. Good athlete, but a young guy. I like the shot. You can see him close from the outside in, and that might have been a chance for Terry to get a tip. Just because you're playing off of a receiver does not mean you cannot challenge the route. And I think that's the thing that you need to see from this UConn secondary as we move forward. Play fake. And lock to Johnson. Lost it. Ruled incomplete. But that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm looking for and you in terms of like what you're saying to challenge the route from the outside in. Here we go. You got a player getting off a block is Jordan Swan. He said, no, I don't care if you're throwing it short. I can still contend on the pass. And if you're Billy Crocker in this UConn defensive staff, that's what they had to do here on third down. Challenge the routes.
Third long. Yukon could use a stop. Juggled catch. Witter. Ish Witter dragged down by Junior Joseph. He bobbled it, brought it in. Big pick up all the way down to the 26 game, 22. First down for the Tigers. Well, you got a matchup. I mean, Witter against uh, Joseph, and he's trying to close from the inside out, and that's a tough matchup. Witter is very, very elusive in space. Block throws again. Jamon Moore, the catch. Thrown down by Jamar Summers. And you got to challenge Moore. That's where he struggled at, when you challenged him. He had a fumble last week. He had a fumble. Going across the middle of the field. This winner. Breaks tackles. Inside the 10, Brayden Brown finally involved the stop for UConn, trying to keep up with this high-octane Tiger offense. It's a big challenge. You see his legs never stop moving. Look how he's running through the contact. And now you've got UConn defenders trying to get off the field. They're struggling just to get off the field because this pace is unbelievable. And you can see they're trying to score another, another touchdown with Locke being the maestro. Where's Okoye Bruno? First and goal to the right of Locke. Ish Witter has room. Ish Witter has the end zone. Touchdown, Missouri. Tigers' first rushing touchdown of the game. Well, Corey Boonham, you asked where he was at, he opened it up. He made the block to <laughs> open up the touchdown. And he, not only can he catch touchdowns, he can block for them too. And Witter had 139 yards rushing against Kentucky. Yeah, Junior Joseph, man, he felt like he was held that time by Trayvon Sims, number 75, uh, but to no avail. And here goes another extra point. Third rushing TD of the year for Ish Witter. McCann, the PAT, 11th TD run for Ish's career. And if it must be the place, then Ish Witter trying to find his place in those Missouri history books, continuing to get it done, the senior. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, Brent Stover, Houston, Night Christian Fourier standing by in our New York studio. I'll have you covered on all the day's action. Busy college football Saturday. Big results at the shoe in Columbus. Penn State has lost. TCU lost. So who's going to win the Big Ten now? Well, I mean, Wisconsin is the only undefeated team. I like the team. Badgers. And, you, and, I, and I can't believe you. That was big time by you. <laughs> and then the running back, I mean, we know about Saquon Barkley and what he's been able to do. He was amazing again today. There's a lot of other running backs. Bryce Love being one. He's been injured. And that's for you right there. I, I know you're wondering about this with the USF loss today. That's big, right, Dave? First loss of the year for Charlie Strong and the Bulls. I was at home in Tampa to Houston, 28-24. So the Bulls 12-game win streak, which had been the longest active in the FBS, is over. UCF is smoking Austin P of the FCS tonight. So UCF will be the lone undefeated team in the American Conference after games this weekend. Are you surprised the Bulls lost? Yes, at home I am, actually. <laughs> Touchback. Skeins let that one go through. Yeah. Hmm. You see some of the hits that we've gotten. A lot of them. Warren comes inside. There's Beckner Jr. Look at this. Marcel Frazier and Brandon Lee coming off the edge. Cupping sheriffs in the pocket. And if you... As you look at head coach Barry Odom, if it's one thing about Barry Odom, we know going back to his days with Memphis, it's all about defense. So he has to be proud of this effort. He's one heck of a defensive mind. Not first down. Kevin Mensah gets by Garrett. And eventually upended by Anthony Sherrills. Back down to Melanie. Well, guys, you saw a lot of the positives there in this Missouri defense, but let's talk about some of the negatives. It's been a problem all year. These guys missing some assignments in the secondary. The coaches have been preaching this all year long. The Missouri secondary coach, uh, defensive backs coach Ryan Walters, has been emphatically telling his guys to do your job, specifically freshman corner Adam Sparks. So something to keep an eye on as the game progresses. First out here, Mel. We'll watch that. Cale Garrett has some pressure and knocks down Bryant Sheriffs. It's had a really nice year, top tackler for Missouri this season, and two of the team's four picks entering the weekend. Well, Garrett has a feel for the game, and I think you can see it on that play. 
They, they laud his high football IQ. You know, he did a delayed blitz very similar to that against Purdue where he got a sack. And he's one of those players that just understands where he needs to fit within the scheme. Second down, Sheriff feels some heat. Wayvon Skane, stopped by Cale Garrett. Sophomore from Kearney, Missouri. Coaches tell us just great instincts, very aggressive player at that Mike middle linebacker spot. He had 47 tackles, six for loss a year ago for the Tigers. And to Melanie's point about what Ryan Walters has been, in, you know, really just kind of employing for this defensive backfield unit, they need the help up front. They're, they're, the guys up front have to dominate. Sheriffs. OG Mayala on the sideline. Bouncing toward the Missouri bench does have a catch. Well, you can kind of see First down. Look, look, look at the room over here. And that's what she was just referring to. You got about seven yards from AC to Mayala. So if you can get some time as UConn offensive line, they can attack the secondary. Off again at 13. Sheriffs. Mayala again on the sideline. That's ruled incomplete. Anthony Sherrills, registered senior from Kansas City on coverage. He's trying to fit this in the zone and hmm. they said he didn't have control because it looked like it looked like his feet did get down. Didn't have it to the ground. Good call. One time up for Rhett Lashley. New offensive coordinator the on the field of incomplete passes for UConn. The review. We'll take a look at that. The challenge. Play ruled incomplete. They're challenging you, Dave. They say. <laughs> I thought the call was really good. Let's see, though. It's not up to me, is it? Well, it might be. They come over here and take a look at some of the replay views that you're seeing. But well, we see that he's got it down. Now, does he have control? I mean, at that point, ball's moving. I mean, but what does that mean? I mean, can the ball not move? I mean, I said it's not like it hit the ground. So, I mean, I, I, it doesn't have to be definitive as he goes through the ground. I, I don't see where the ball ever hit the ground. And his feet were already down in bounds. But control to the ground is part of the catch, right? So does he have that? Yeah, I mean, where does it hit the ground? I don't see where it hits the ground at all. If they say that's not a catch, then I don't agree with it. I get what you're saying. It's still bobbling as he's going out of bounds. But I mean, you got to give him a chance to finish the catch, and he was already in bounds. So I didn't really understand why he said it wasn't a catch anyway. But uh, again, um, you're probably right. I mean, these this stuff frustrates me. It slows down the game, and for me, uh, just I mean, you, you've got to make that call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Second down. Like to me, that's a catch. Like when I was growing up in Pee Wee on the sidelines and on the oh, catch in Pee Wee for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, if you're in bounds, you, you right. now if I'm out of bounds and it's not a catch, but if I'm in bounds and I finish the catch, it never hits the ground. How is it not a catch? I mean, not a good call that time by the replay booth or the officials, and that's my take. Which we appreciate very much, Corey. But I'm glad. Rule incomplete. I'm glad you disagree with me, actually. <laughs> Sheriffs. Wayvon Skaines can't bring that in at the 45. Now, that's not a catch. <laughs> that's not a catch. The We're both in agreement on that one. <laughs> the other one was a catch. That That's not a catch. So. Target line is in for kicker, kicker Michael Tarbutt. He's got one already tonight for UConn. Could be a free Husky play. Looked like moving up front for the Tigers flag down. The pass incomplete. Ruggie Mayala on the sideline route and 10 receiver. With Garrett providing some heat again against Sheriffs. Offside defense, five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. You see right there, that's number 93, Trey Williams. And Look at this shot by Gary. Eh, just a little bit of a love tap, but. First penalty of the quarter for Missouri. Pressure, Sheriffs again. Sheryls all over him. Anthony Sheryls on the blitz for the Tigers with a sack. Timeout. 
Cheryl's is coming off the edge and he's kind of delaying, but really you've got Frazier really moving back Cam to George. You see Frazier, he's a line right here. Watch him come inside and he's going to really get some pressure on number 70, Ryan Vandermark. And now you see the delayed blitz on the outside by number 22, Anthony Sherrills. And so that was really forced by Frazier. And then he kind of finished it up with Sherrills. Mizzou fans have been waiting for Marcel Frazier to break out, playing well here again tonight. Richard Sr. from Portland. So 10-yard loss, timeout called by Barry Odom. No timeouts remaining in the half, though, for Missouri with a minute eight to go. Well, they don't need much time. We've seen that tonight. Most of their scoring oh, absolutely drives not. <laughs> have been under two minutes. Lock is 23 of 29 passing, 245 yards and three touchdowns. No picks tonight for Mizzou. Graham kicking to Floyd. Nice punt. Good bounce. Floyd on the hop. Scampers out of bounds at the 13-yard line of Missouri. Forty six yard punt. There's Tucker McCann. Sophomore from outside St. Louis. Thirty seven yard field goal tonight. Target line for Tucker is a thirty yard line. That's why I'm trying to force the yard. fouls. Half the distance to the goal. Excuse me, Dave. The forty five yard field goal he tried against Kentucky was blocked off the edge. We talked about that yesterday, but if I'm a UConn right now, you, you've been playing and giving them a lot of room all night. Uh, so you, you've got to suspect that they're going to do the same thing right here. So if you're Drew Locke, why not attack the middle of the field? I think that's the, the area of the field that will be open. Now, they play as soft as they have on the outside. Those outside lanes will be open, and maybe you can get out of bounds with some sideline throws. Holding call, Missouri. Backs him up to about the six. Round to the third, stopped by Coyle. Monte Diggs on the throw down as well. I guess they're just going to concede and go ahead and. Well, hang on a minute. 50 seconds. That's plenty of time for Drew Locke. Yeah, well, I mean. Watch out for Manuel Hall. No timeouts, though. McCann's ready if needed. Off again at 15. Here's Locke. What a half he's had. Jamon Moore the catch. Underneath route, got to about the 32. There's a first down. Now they got to speed up the pace a little bit. If you're trying to get in the range of McCann, you've got to significantly go faster than this if you're Drew Locke. Agreed. First down for the Tigers. Here's Locke. Steps away from Heat. Now scrambles. Foley Fatukasi is in pursuit. Big guy up front, 303 pounds for UConn. 13 seconds left in the half. And that was 10 seconds off the clock, just him scrambling out of bounds. So now you're at a point where if you drew log, you know, what part of the air, what area of the field do you attack? If I'm UConn, I want to make sure I have somebody in the middle of the field. Because really, I mean, their only hope is to throw a sideline route. They've got to protect the sidelines at all costs. So if I'm Drew Locke, I'm thinking maybe the middle of the field is open, but it looks like UConn's going to have somebody in the middle of the field. Play clock at one. Locke gets it off. Drew Locke steps up. Flag down. Locke on the move. And slides down in front of Tyler Coyle. And five seconds left in the half. Let's check out the marker. Holding number 75 offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Sophomore from East St. Louis, Trevor Sims, player Corey talked about a few moments ago. There's Sims inside, and you can see he's doing a lot more than just holding. <laughs> and that was that was pretty, he kind of leaned on him a little bit. All right, so five seconds left in the half here. Now, put this in perspective, Corey. Drew Locke has 24 completions already in the first half. His career high. Last year against Delaware State, 26 completions for a game. Now, uh, this has been a clinic. <laughs> well, they've taken, I mean, it, he takes a lot of shots down the field. I guess they're, they're, not, they're not opposed to taking another one right here. They're, they're not lining up. But I don't know if he can throw it 85 yards. I know he has a strong He's arm. He's got a huge arm. Oh, 
And that's it for the half. Into the no second quarter. Play here for Barry Odom. And Mizzou, why not? Playing so well on the road. 31-5 lead on UConn of the American Conference. After the break, we'll send you to Brent and the gang in New York. It's going to be fun to recap an amazing day and night in college football. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network. Presented by GEICO. You are watching the Verizon Halftime Report on CBS Sports Network. All right, welcome in. Brent Stilber, Houston Nut, Christian Fourier at the break at UConn. Dominant first half for Missouri out of the SEC. It's 31-5, Coach. It's all Missouri right now. Drew Locke, 24 for 30, 256 yards, three touchdown passes, and, boy, they're going up down the field. Missouri's getting better. And you watch here, they're really using the play-action fake. Uh, right here is the back shoulder throw. Good job of concentrating by the receiver. Now they'll come back with the play action. Looks like run, looks like run. Dump it over. This, oh, this is just play all the way. Yeah. No question. Don't spike that ball. Come back with play action again. <laughs> and the tight end, somebody cover the tight end. Mm. What a rough year from Missouri. And Drew Locke, though, he always he does this. He performs really well against teams that aren't as good. It's the big games where he struggles. Speaking of struggling, Brian Sheriff's quarterback on the other side for UConn, just 12 of 27. Houston and USF. Charlie Strong in year one. Perfect so far, 7-0, the nation's longest winning streak at 12, and having scored at least 30 points in 24 straight games, that's a record in the modern era of college football at the FBS level. Houston at USF, 24-21, minute to play. Look at this, fourth and 24. No. The Cougars need a miracle oh. in the final drive. Just a Hail Mary pass. Oh my gosh, De'Ara King finds Courtney Lark in the 19 seconds to play. King makes some magic, Coach. Athletic move. Looked like a sprint out to the left, oh. but no. Tucks it and run down the right boundary. Touchdown. USF suffers their first loss. That 12-game winning streak is over. The 24 straight games with 30 or more is over as well. UCF and Austin P. Mackenzie Milton, beautiful ball. Incredible catch by Dredrick Snelson. Wow. Then Milton here to trick once. Yeah, that, that, that right there was one of the prettier catches I've seen all year. Milton five. He said it. 15-yard touchdown. High point the football. Bring it down. One foot of bounds. They remain unbeaten. They've got 73 points. Milton 24 26. JT Barrett, one of the all time great fourth quarters. Wait till you see what he did trying to pull it out of the fire against Penn State. And the fourth ranked Frogs waltzed in to Ames, Iowa, and Jack Trice. Fourth ranked TCU went to Jack Trice, coach, and they ran into Kyle Kempt. Hits a keen butler right there. Good job with the footwork to get in the end zone there with two feet. Woo. All right, TCU down seven. What do you see from Kenny? Oh, Hill? man. Miss, a little miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback. Big play for Iowa State. Brian Peavy would take it down to the 30. It was 14 7, and Kenny Hill, another mistake. Mm. He fumbled around the 20 of Iowa State as well late in the game. He made a lot of mistakes in the second half and a major upset as Iowa State knocks off TC. Penn State, Ohio State in a classic. 14 3, Saquon Barkley, 36 yard touchdown. The Nittany Lions in the horseshoe in control, 21 3. Jump ahead, fourth quarter, 38 27. JT Barrett. JT Barrett came alive in the fourth quarter. He completed 16 straight passes and Ohio State record stole them. 38 33. End zone wide open, Marcus Baugh capping an 18 point Buckeye comeback. That's the largest comeback at the FBS level in the illustrious career of Urban Meyer. JT Barrett, that's what big players do. That was one of the best games we will see all season. Oh, unbelievable. You know, for there for a while, you just thought it's going to be all Penn State. Penn State dominated the game. Looks good. All of a sudden, JT Barrett comes back. He's executed. He's gotten better since the Oklahoma game. Ohio State dug themselves such an early hole from the opening kickoff being returned by Saquon Barkley, fumbling the ball, and then Penn State getting points off that. Ohio State was down 18 points twice. They're down 15 points with 11 mm. minutes left in the game. They're able to crawl themselves back. The difference for both these games, Iowa State and Ohio State, their defensive lines were dominant when it mattered most. Kyle Kemp, though, the quarterback at Iowa State, this guy really playing good. He started with the last three or four games. He's undefeated. Matt Campbell, how about the job he's uh, done? Great job. My, my friends back there in the Midwest, back in the heartland, mm -hmm. coach knows about it. AC <laughs> country. Is Iowa State for real? Are they for uh, real? Right now, they think you asked that locker room right now, they said they're for real. It's TCU's it's first, first loss. You wonder if TCU, with the Big 12 championship game this year, if they can still climb back into the playoff picture. Oh, yeah, of course. 
Yeah. There's a lot of teams. Time. A lot yeah. of teams have one loss there. <laughs> a lot of time. We're only in week nine. Still early. Uh, by the way, JT Barrett, 33 of 39, 328, four touchdowns, and 91 career touchdown passes, passing Drew Brees for the all time record. So that's a record formally set by Drew Brees. Drew Locke from Missouri trying to set some records. A touchdown throw in the first half. They lead on the road 31 5. Clemson in 78 straight games without losing two in a row. Last time we saw them, they lost at Syracuse 15 days ago. Cravante Benson coughs it up for Georgia Tech. Kendrell Joseph recovers. Then Kelly Bryant hits Dion Kane. 38 yard touchdown. The Tigers in the opening quarter. Seventh ranked lead 7 0. Texas Tech out firing against OU. Opening drive. Nick Shamanic rolls out. Hits Cameron Batson. Whew, good job. With the great protection right here. Now he's going to kind of move to his right. Could throw on the move. Excellent job of the receiver getting open. Baker Mayfield responds, Christian. Oh, yeah, because that's what he does. Lots of time. He connects with C.D. Lamb for the 24-yard touchdown. Nick Shamanic. again. Kiki Cutie. Kiki. Kiki. Yeah, they spell it with an E, though, right? Yeah, there's no eyes in there. You have a child named Kiki. Yeah, it's her nickname. It's her nickname. First quarter. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma's in trouble. Or are they, Coach? What do you I'd think? say today's been a crazy day. Yeah. When you look at uh, the landscape of football, you don't ever know. You better be ready to play each and every Yeah, Saturday. You're right. It, you, you never know. It's it's almost November. This is what upsets That's happen. That's right. We have a late game still to go. With I know. The Mountain I'm, West. Are you excited? Yes. Second half of this one, 31-5 after the break. This has been the Verizon Halftime Report. Watch live, local, and primetime games with NFL Mobile, only on Verizon. With Halloween right around the corner, kind of a scary night for UConn yeah. and Husky fans so far. 31-5 trailing Missouri. First American Conference team to take on an SEC team this year. Not going well so far for the Huskies. Welcome back to East Hartford. Dave Corey rejoined by Melanie in a moment. On the field, let's check our Wrangler first half stats. What stands out to you through 30 minutes? Well, I mean, for the first time on the sixth time in 30 quarters, Missouri actually led in time of possession. Now, they came into the game at about 22 minutes per game, which is last in the country. Eight minutes and eight seconds in that second quarter, which means they're holding the ball. And a lot of it has been Drew Locke. Now, he's been really, really on point in terms of where to go with the football, and a lot of that has to do with pre-snap and getting it done in the pre-snap. Now, he moved Okoye Boonham a couple of times in those sequences on two of those touchdowns, and that has a lot to do with how he's improved from a mental perspective. 24 of 30, 256 passing yards, three touchdowns, no picks, first half for Lott. McCann will kick off, Claymont schemes. Deep to receive for UConn to begin the second half here tonight in East Hartford. Dangerous play to field that for Skeens in the corner. Quavon gets out to about the 19. Back down to Melanie Collins. Well, Dave, before I could even get to, D to Barry Odom before the second half, he was yelling to Jamon Moore, don't let up and tell the guys not to let up. He said, we got to get off the field on third down and we have to run the ball more. And then I spoke to Coach Edsel. He said, we got to take advantage of things in the passing game and then our running game will open up. And I asked him what his message to his guys was. He said, don't play tentative. Some of our young guys are playing on their heels. He said, play with confidence and have some fun out there. That's a challenge, Mel. You're down 31-5, and there are some young Huskies out there. Sheriff's fifth-year senior, not one of those. But he's handing off to his freshman running back, Kevin Minson. Kale Garrett, Brandon Lee, Therese Hall. Hot pursuit of Kevin Minson on the first play of the second half. Loss of two. Sheriff 12 of 27, 149 yards passing, no touchdowns though in that first half for UConn. Safety and field goal scoring wise for the Huskies. Play fake. Pressure. Drop. Deion Dixon by himself can't bring that in. This has been a problem for Dixon. He had a drop against Tulsa on a speed out. He had a drop on a dash pass against ECU. And also on a dig route against ECU, the similar pattern that they just ran. So I, I think you, you look at this football team, it hasn't all been on Sheriffs tonight. He's had some drops.
Third and long. Sheriffs out of the drop. Skeins this time. And Sheriffs shaking up. Looks like hustling to the sideline. Let's see. Took a late shot. Got sandwiched there with Trey Williams and Marcel Frazier. Two talented pass rushers coming off the edge in a major challenge. Although on the left side, Matt Parrott has been pretty solid. You haven't heard much from his men, but Ryan Vandermark has had some struggles at times against Frazier. Pressure. Graham gets the kick away. Floyd from midfield. Summers just got absolutely pounded. And Brian Keating makes the tackle on special teams. 33-yard punt. Well, catching kick times, that's something I grade every week. And I thought that 1.35, 1.29, those are some of the times I had on Graham. You got to catch and kick and get rid of the football off of your foot. And that's one of the things that you saw on the last kick. It was a little bit slow. QB comparison tonight. Boy, Locke has been just fantastic. Had a couple drop, missed on one sure thing, touchdown in the first half. Those numbers might be even better. Hall has a catch. Summers can't make the tackle in space. And Vontae Diggs sends him out of bounds. Emmanuel Hall's a good one. But you got to make the tackle. And again, I know it's a question that and that's one of the questions that I talked with about the, with the coaches this week. Game nine. Hall stays busy. First down. Summers this time drops and makes a nice play. Well, that's an example of doing it the right way. I mean, he comes up, he makes the tackle. Uh, Jamar Summers is a player with 11 career interceptions. Uh, he's competed against some of the best receivers in the country at a high level. He should make those tackles. Gain of eight, first down. Play fake. More the catch. Jamon Moore makes a nice move. Keeps on trucking. Marche Terry has a stop for UConn. Like these receivers, Corey, from Mizzou. Well, one thing about Jordan Swan, the guy that missed that last tackle against J. Mon Moore, he only played one year of high school football at St. Francis Academy. Now, he was second in the state with 10 interceptions. It was only one year of high school football. Moore again. Summers on the other side. Works the boundary and has the play. Shows him out of bounds. New career high. We talked about that in the first half. He was so close. Drew Locke, prior career best. Delaware State last year, 26 in a home win. 28 and counting for Locke now. You can see the, the, these receivers are getting some press coverage. Will he take a shot outside? Enzo. Moore. Touchdown. Missouri. J. Mar Moore. Thirteen yards out this time. Four TD passes tonight for Locke. Well, they're bringing an extra guy, and you, you've got the perfect pass by Locke. Pretty good coverage by Summers. We kept talking about these guys playing off and making tackles. What well, a minute they go up and press, Locke sees it, and he throws the fade over the top. And, and, and you couldn't be doing it any better than Drew Locke tonight in terms of having a feel and a command of the game. McCann has PAT. Green light by Lord. Well, Mizzou has a green light to score a lot of points tonight. Green means go for the Tigers. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's, perfect by Ram Trucks, proven to last. And by the General Insurance. Get a free anonymous online quote now. Soldiers and Sailors Arch at Bushnell Park in downtown Hartford, oldest publicly funded park in the U.S. Earlier tonight, proposal down on one knee, and the answer is yes. Congratulations to those two. Thanks for your service as well. United States Navy. Wonderful moment here 
in East Hartford. Not so many wonderful moments for Husky fans, though. Watching Jamon Moore and the Tigers run rough shot on the UConn defense. McCann kicks off. Wave on Skeens deep to receive here for the Huskies. Thompson tells him to take a knee, and Skeens agrees. Touchback. Had a chance to walk around Bushnell Park today, Corey, before the game. Awesome. It was beautiful. State Capitals there. Yeah, I nice ran over there. Yeah. Not far from the hotel. Brian Sheriffs has returned. That's good news for UConn. And as Rhett Lashley told us yesterday, sometimes this young developing team will get overmatched, and that's the case in point here tonight. Long way to go. Huskies trying to, to build toward their next game. Wow, Mensa carrying and Beckner Jr. says no. A huge play for Terry Beckner Jr. of Missouri. Loss of three. Well, when you pull the guard and he's in front of Beckner and he takes the back door, forget about it. Oh. <laughs> they pulled around number 70, Cam to George, and left a little bit of a gap for Beckner and that quickness off the snap. And he was in a flash gone. Seven TFL tackles for loss tonight for Missouri. Wow. And UConn confused a bit. Timeout called by the Huskies. First charge timeout, UConn. First of the second, second half out. for UConn. And Lashley will try to get on the same page with his fifth year senior quarterback. And some drops tonight have not helped the Husky cause, Corey. Well, they haven't. Now, that was a little bit behind. That wasn't. I feel like some of the throws that he's made have been right on target. That has to frustrate head coach Randy Edsel. And it certainly has to frustrate offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley, who's do, done his best to get, I mean, remember the flea flicker early in the game where they had an opportunity and you had the pressure from Garrett that forced that pass by Skeens to be a little bit off the mark. That could have been a big play. So they've just had a lot of opportunities they've left on the field. And those numbers for Sheriffs, 12 of 29, aren't reflective of his true performance tonight. Second down. Sheriffs, good catch, Herji Mayala. Terrence Hall with the bump out of bounds. No penalty that time, looked like Mayala had it stepped out of bounds by a couple strides. Gain of eight. Hall entering play tonight, second in the SEC in tackles for loss. Missouri struggled overall with the stats defensively. They have some studs, though. On third down, McLean the catch. Incomplete. Thought he had that over the middle. Well, it's nearly an interception by Terrell's Hall. Look at number. Yep, incomplete. 24. He comes into the passing lane and nearly picks off the pass. And he gets it inside, and we have another drop pass for McLean. Anthony Sherrill's shaking up here for Missouri. Anthony had the interception late in the game on that fake field goal try in 2015 when Mizzou beat UConn, only prior meeting, 9-6. That sealed the victory for the Tigers over UConn that day in Columbia. Through the last four drives for Bryant Sheriff's three and outs now for UConn, really struggling. Shot Floyd, deep to receive the punt here from Brett Graham. Nice kick. Floyd indicates four and makes the over the shoulder backpedaling. Fair catch. Nicely done by Rashad Floyd. Missouri looking good tonight. 42 yard punt from Brett Graham. 
Tomorrow, the Vikings take on the Browns live from London on NFL Network. And the NFL and CBS features regional action. The Chargers battle of Patriots. Texans go up against the Seahawks. All begins with the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines at 12 Eastern. 38-5. It's all Missouri back down to Melanie Collins. Well, Dave, this UConn defense is just looking defeated down here. Vontae Diggs is so upset visibly. Luke Carazola is angry. And the message from linebackers coach John Woolley and defensive line coach Dennis Dotton Carter is do your job. When things are going wrong, you're all trying to say, hey, me, 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 and doing each other's jobs. So he's telling the defensive line, especially at least fill the right gap. Billy Crocker, first year defensive coordinator for Randy Edsel. Really good showing against Tulsa. Most of the game last week in a win. Roundtree, the first down run. They had shut out the Golden Hurricane until there was seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. And Tulsa made an amazing comeback, almost won the game late. UConn hung on 17 straight for Drew Lock and the Mizzou offense. UConn scored on a safety early. That's really been about it. In terms of a threat tonight. Lock on the pitch. Roundtree up handed. Jamar Summers makes a really nice tackle this time. Well, I find it. Omar Fort. I find it interesting that one of the things that Melanie found out from really just hearing them on the sidelines about filling gaps. And, and on this drive so far, you've got two runs for one yard. And it's been about everybody being in the right position now. It's a little bit different. And you can see that they're challenging again on the outside lanes. These receivers, they need to challenge themselves and force Drew Lott to make a tight window throw. Everything has pretty much been on air tonight to me. I mean, it, it, very easy completions all night for Lott. Here's third down. Pressure from Joseph. Pass over the middle is brought in. Johnson on the catch. And the speed. Jonathan Johnson running away from the defense. It's a touchdown for Missouri. 72 yards. How about that speed for Mizzou? Well, you matched up with Marche Terry, 6'4", 212 pounds, one-on-one -on -one with Johnson, and now you see why they played off all night. Just not a, just a mismatch. Terry cannot match up with Johnson's quickness. He came into the game averaging 15 yards per reception. Their coaches said, attention to detail. When you talk to Josh Heupel, and he talked about Jonathan Johnson, and that route was an example. Lock has five touchdown passes tonight. Johnson's got his first and fourth of the season. McCann has a PAT. Tenth 50-plus yard touchdown pass for Lock this year. And is he happy? You better believe it. These Tigers are celebrating tonight. Coming up next, late night Mountain West Showdown, Boise State charging into Utah State. Face the Aggies in Logan. It's all right here on CBS Sports Network. Boise State 3-0 in the Mountain Division. Colorado State lost to Air Force on our air, so that's their first loss in Mountain West play. Some really good teams out there. We know San Diego State in the West has lost a couple in a row. Sure have. And Boise State has kind of made a comeback after struggling a little bit earlier in the season. I, I think that Boise State has kind of found their groove. They had the two quarterback system most of the year. That Cozart ripping, who's going to play? I think they both have had their moments, but uh, Boise State always seems to find a way, no matter what is going on, to be competitive in the Mountain West. Agree. Great program. McCann kicks the skeins. To the end zone for a touchback. On the last touchdown day, Braden Brown and Marche Terry are the two players to watch. And as I spotlight them, the, the thing that you've got to do if you're Terry, you, you, you're playing man coverage, but pause it right here. If you pause it right here, now you see Brown right here. He can't overrun this angle because he's supposed to be in the middle of the field. He can't go that way. So once he gets beat, there's nobody in the middle of the field. He overruns his angle to the middle of the field, and that's where Terry was expecting him to be. And, and that's the reason why it was such a clear path for Johnson to the end zone. Sheriffs on first down. Herji Mayala has the catch in front of Thomas Wilson. Well, true freshman, right, Corey? I mean, you can have yeah. mistakes like that. 
that can really be game busters. A lot of times what, it, 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 when you're coaching that up, though, and, and, and I always told the other safeties that I was playing with, square back up. You know, once you get to the middle of the field, you can't keep running unless you've got to play outside the numbers. So if it was a fade route, then you would keep running like a go route. But if it's a middle of the field throw, you square back up. Caleb Pruitt on the tackle there. Uh, Nate Hopkins a moment ago. Learning experience for youngsters like Braden Brown. Third and short. And that play gets blown up by Missouri. And Eric Beisel was in the backfield almost immediately along with Lee. It's a lot to like about Lee's energy when he comes in and, and Beisel, he's just an instinctive player. But both of those players, Lee has the energy. You see him on the kickoff team at the R3 breaking from the curl zones to make simple tackles, walk him out over the slot. But Beisel, he's got a high football IQ. He had 44 tackles, six tackles for loss a year ago as a part-time starter. Graham, punts to Rashad Floyd. Calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 36. And we've got a timeout from Rensselaer Field in East Hartford. It's all Missouri tonight. 45-5 over UConn. Let's check in with tonight's Geico difference makers. Got to be Drew Lock, Corey Wright, 31 of 37. Yeah, regardless of what coverages the other team is playing or how much they are struggling, it's your responsibility to find the open men, and that's what he's done. And on the other side, Brian Sheriffs has not gotten a lot of help. Now, some of it has been on him, but I think the Missouri defensive front, and we, we felt like they could have an impact on this game. I think they flustered him at times as well. Talked about those guys top of the broadcast. Lot hands off. Fish Witter. On the carry. Gets to about the 41. Locks new career high in completions at 31 and counting. Six touchdowns and a home win over Idaho last week. Fish Witter, patient. Omar Fort, I faked right out of his shoes. <laughs> it was a pretty good move. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he could have, maybe if he had actually connected on the trip, they might have gotten a penalty. It's true. So he, just, he, he beat the trip. Well, I guess he didn't. He kind of. He did get a piece of it. Yeah, that's so, that definitely a penalty. You can't leg whip anybody or trip people. But uh, uh, one thing a lot of people will point to with Locke, and I think we've talked about it, is the touchdowns. On third down. Winner carries, looking for that first down. Marche Terry trying to drag him backwards. Well, what I was saying before that play, Dave, was that the, the touchdowns against the, the other opponents, and even tonight as we see this replay. He did have a lot of touchdown passes against Georgia and Kentucky as well, so it hasn't all been in three or four games. Uh, he's gotten hot down the stretch of this year. About half a yard shy of the first down. We might have a punt coming up here from Corey Fatoni. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of Fatoni tonight. Mm -mm. Foley Fatukasi helped off by UConn trainers. That air mailed snap in the first quarter resulted in a safety. Very talented punter for Missouri. Waybon Skeens loses the handle, but it does go out of bounds, so the Huskies will have it. To the studio, New York, Brad Stover has an update. Dave, it's a shootout in Norman, Texas Tech OU. Baker Mayfield, short touchdown throw. Marquise Brown, early seconds. Sooners go in front, 21-20. All right, Brent, five in a row. For OU head-to-head -head with the Texas Tech Red Raiders, a Big 12 showdown already in that conference. Iowa State knocks off previously undefeated TCU. First college football playoff poll comes out Tuesday night, and there is going to be a shakeup because Penn State and TCU both lost today. Got to love late October into November. Things really change. First playoff poll coming out. Exciting. Catch for Herji Mayala. I think that Iowa State win is, is going to be big in terms of 
you know, how will it play out in terms with, with the top teams? I mean, TCU, a lot of people were expecting them to have a little bit longer run before they would lose the game. Eric Beisel on the stop this time of Sheriffs in space. After Brian Sheriffs eluded the first tackler for Missouri. Joey Burkett couldn't bring him down. Tough night for Coach Edsel on the Huskies. First down for Sheriffs. Gonna run with it. And it's sandwiched. Hit there by Kobe Whiteside. Back down to Melanie. Well, Dave, for Brian Sheriffs, after a come to Jesus talk with Coach Edsel at the start of the year, he won the starting job back and he hasn't looked back since. Coach Edsel told us Bryant was just playing the position before, but now he's actually being a quarterback. He said being benched was one of the hardest, but also one of the best things that's happened to him because he had to dig deep within himself, and now he's thriving in this offense. And most of all, he said he's having fun, guys. We had a great meeting, Mel, didn't we, yesterday with Bryant Sheriffs, senior quarterback. Passing here, Tyreek Beals has a catch, shakes a tackler. And eventually is brought down by Caleb Pruitt. Sheriffs has come a long way. Things have changed in his life personally. Beals is shaking up here and might need some attention from UConn trainers. That's Tyreek Beals. UConn wide receiver right in front of the Missouri bench. Here come the Husky trainers across the field. It's a gain of eight. Let's find out what happened, Corey. Looked like Beisel got in a little bit late after Pruitt had tackled him around the ankles. A couple years back, he kind of thought Bills was going to be that next breakout receiver for this team and took a step back a year ago this year. Hasn't scored, but does have 21 catches coming into the game. And with all the drops by his receiving mates, this is a time for him to step up if he can get back in the game. And Sheriff's been through three different offensive coordinators at UConn. Lots of change with Bob Diaco and his staff leaving after 2016. Mensa the carry. And pushes the pile ahead. Chains will move for UConn. Good effort there for Kevin Mensa. Well, as Bryant Sheriff told us yesterday, things a little different for him now. He's got a little boy to support. Look at Brayden, seven and a half months old. Bryant and his fiance, happy and proud parents. Check that little dude out. I like the sunglasses <laughs> and the hat. That's all awesome. set to go. That's awesome, man. And it's good to see kids have an opportunity to become men, and that's exactly what he's done. Chair steps up, has some pressure, and another drop for Dixon. He's had a couple of those tonight. And it hasn't all been bad for Dixon this season. I mean, now he's, you know, he's, he's, had, he's struggled in terms of the drops, but he did catch a double post touchdown against SMU. Um, I think he's had a factor in terms of their fly sweeps. They've gotten him involved in the game uh, from that. Um, I mean, he's... It's kind of been up and down like some of their receivers, but he's had his moments. Richard freshman from Glastonbury, Connecticut. Track champion, New England region. Good athlete. Here's second down, Sheriff's throwing. Wayvon Skeens has the catch. And Thomas Wilson hangs on. Makes the play for Missouri. Pick up a six. I'm hearing Melanie talk earlier about Ryan Walters and what he's expecting from his unit. You want to see your unit tackle well now. It's third down, you want to see them challenge receivers now and not look at the scoreboard. Sheriffs in the rollout. Had some pressure. And that pass to Jason Thompson is incomplete. It was slammed there by Marcel Frazier and a penalty flag down. Personal foul coming here. Ooh. 
Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 19 defense, drove the passer into the ground. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. So the number is 16, Marcel Frazier, and McCann is the kicker, so that's incorrect. And officials misidentifying Marcel Frazier. I'm not sure what he's supposed to do in that situation. <laughs> well, you don't Are know. Are you going to physically hold him up in the air? I mean, he's got to finish the tackle, right? Right. I mean, I think a lot of that comes down to this. I, you, you can start driving, but I guess you have to stop in between. And uh, Again, it's a questionable call but I mean I think that's something that they, these players know that when you drive quarterbacks the quarterbacks are going to be protected as long as they're in the pocket now when they leave the pocket that's when the protection begins to leave for them but if you're in the pocket these officials are taught to protect these quarterbacks second out for sheriffs go run with it Mensa helping with some blocking loses his footing and Gerard Alton puts him down hard. He's getting a 13 there for Brian Sheriffs. Now this play was very similar to, I think, the hit the other night with Kiko Alonso and Joe Flacco uh, in the Baltimore Ravens-Miami Dolphins game because he slid late. If you want to avoid that contact that you saw at the end of that play, just slide one step earlier. And I know that's tough when you have those competitive juices flying, like, especially for Sheriffs. His first down. Sheriffs, Mayala, broke it up. And incomplete. Logan Cheadle, senior from Lee's Summit, Missouri, on the PBU. That's an excellent break from the inside out. Just like you said, Dave, you, you can't do it much better than that. And the thing that I liked about it was that he went towards the high shoulder with his initial break. And what I mean by that, that's the shoulder where you would expect Sheriffs to throw the ball to the pylon. And he went towards that. That allowed him to come back underneath and make the play. Uh, a good job by Cheadle. Second down. Low snap. Sheriffs. Connects. Herji Mayala has the catch for UConn. Tonight's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Touchdowns obviously yet on the night for UConn. Field goal for Tarbett and the safety early in the game on the high snap. Over the head of Fatoni, the Mizzou punter. Third and two, Sheriffs keeps, makes a cut, and has a first down. Thomas Wilson on the tap. And if you're Randy Enzo, I think this has to be the part as you see them continue to get back up to the line of scrimmage, and we'll get into it after this play. Tyreek Beals has the catch. Makes a nice move and rolls inside the five. Second down, Sheriffs try to power toward the goal line. And Kobe Whiteside dragged him down from behind. What I was going to say a second ago, Dave, was that I think this is the part where you want to work on that red zone offense. I mean, this is you struggled in this part of the field. The game could have been totally different if you had scored a little bit earlier, especially with the turnover on down. So who's going to be your threat? I don't see Tyler Davis in the game. They've had success with them. Herji Mayala is a guy at the top of the screen that you would always think is a possibility. First and goal. Mensa looking for the end zone. Touchdown, UConn. Kevin Mensa. True freshman from Cheshire, Connecticut. Has his second career touchdown run. Pretty good job blocking on that right side by Brendan Beckery, really the center. I think Alec Bloom held up just enough against Frazier on the edge, but that has, that has to be encouraging. I, I think no matter what the score is, you want to have positive signs moving forward if you're UConn. PAT from Michael Tarbin. 15-play drive, Corey. That was the best of the night for UConn. 
Well, Minson was a 55-meter dash runner in high school. Didn't have to run that far for that touchdown. Three different running backs this year have run for 100 plus yards in a game. Kevin Mensah, one of those, had 107 in the heartbreaking loss to East Carolina here a few weeks back. TD run a moment ago. First touchdown of the night for the Huskies. Touchback. This is a young program. We've got a new offensive coordinator. And yes, you have a fifth year senior quarterback. But Red Lashley told us yesterday, Corey, it's a work in progress. Yeah, it is. I, I think for them, it's going to come down to really this coming up in this first signing period in December. You know, what type of players do you sign? I mean, when we talked to Randy Edsel, a lot of it was about being able to kind of recruit a different kind of athlete. you got to be able to control this state. The success he had earlier in his career at UConn has opened up. A lot of those kids watching those games are now playing in this state. And, and those are the guys you've got to get to come and be Huskies. And I think they understand the process to just getting different kind of athletes in there. Michael Wilson takes over as quarterback. Drew Locke might be done for the night. Roundtree the third on the carry. Retro freshman from Tulsa. His dad played in Missouri. He was a captain for the Tigers in the 80s. Played in the fourth quarter last week in that huge win over Idaho. We have plenty of action tonight, it appears. Johnson the catch, Vontae Diggs and Omar Fort. Along with Chris Britton. And one of our audio technicians gets knocked out. <laughs> Hopefully he's okay. Well, let's. Quite a night for Drew Locke, 31 of 37. 377 passing yards, five touchdowns, most completions in his career. Seven touchdowns against Missouri State in the opener. Six last week against Idaho. Both Missouri records and five tonight. Head to head with UConn. There is a Husky player shaken up. And four against Georgia. I mm. think we got to keep throwing right. that in there. And, and also the, the outstanding performance that he had against Kentucky. So he's getting hot as the season goes on. And I thought he had some rough patches earlier in the year that particularly that Purdue game, South Carolina. They struggled to find a rhythm. James Atkins shake it up. Letcher Jr. from Saugus, Massachusetts. And it'll be helped off by UConn trainers here. Georgia giving up three touchdowns prior through the air before facing Drew Locke in Missouri. The Dogs did win that game in Athens. Mizzou was winless in the SEC. But with a win here tonight, after breaking the five-game losing streak against Idaho last week, three and five, and some pretty winnable games down the stretch in the SEC for them. Next opponent is Florida, and they just got smoked by Georgia today. Gators are reeling. Third down for Wilson. Nice pass incomplete. And shot Floyd at 10 and receiver. Vontae digs on coverage for UConn. And Michael Wilson will hold right back to the Missouri bench. Punt time for the Tigers. Florida, Tennessee, Vandy, Arkansas. Remaining games for Missouri. Tennessee, Vandy, and Arkansas entering the weekend had not won in the SEC. And Arkansas blew a huge lead today against Ole Miss. Owen five in the lead. But Tony Punny. And that'll check up at about the 27 yard line of UConn. Back to New York, an update. Here is Brent Stover. Georgia Tech at number seven, Clemson. Travis Etienne, short touchdown run, late second. All Clemson, 21 3, guys. All right, Brent. 10 of 12 against the Yellow Jackets since 96. Head to head the ACC. Comes that one loss at the Dome against Syracuse. Bouncing back nicely. New quarterback here as well for UConn. David Pindell, who began the year as the starter. 
Jr. from Columbia, Missouri. Home of Mizzou. McLean and Tanner receiver that ball deflected. It's incomplete. Pendell did not play particularly well against Holy Cross in the opener. Now it was lifted for Brian Sheriffs, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. Then came in, Sheriffs came in and took over, has been the quarterback since. Pendell throwing, McLean and tenor receiver. And Beisel to break up again for Missouri. So Brian Sheriff's night. Corey, how do you break this down? Well, I would say out of the, the 20 incompletions, you, you're probably talking about nine drops. So you don't know where it could have gone. Uh, I think that it didn't turn the ball over. That's a positive. Uh, I think in the red zone, there's some issues in terms of uh, them showing up what they want to be in that area of the field. Uh, I think that's something that coming into the game was a struggle for this team. They were 110th in the country in the red zone. They've got to get better in that part of the field. Third down, Pendell. And the breakup. Adam Sparks from his cornerback spot with a nice jump on it. And it's incomplete. True freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I just think overall, and you could even look at this punt right here. I think this is Jamar Summers as your gunner, the senior corner. And, I, and again, now I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I kind of like it. And then, but you're going to have to get some other players to provide even more of a speed element on your football team moving forward. Dominic Collins, backup receiver and backup punt returner for Rashad Floyd, makes the play. Drew Locke, quite an evening for Mizzou. And that was maybe his best red zone throw. These other two, they were uncontested. I mean, that, that was partly contested. Nobody's around uh, on that touchdown, and that was a pretty good throw as well. And this was on time and just a bad angle by your safety and leave, it leaves Terry one-on-one -on -one against maybe one of the best slot receivers in the SEC. So the last couple of weeks, we've seen Locke's potential. Uh, you want to see him hit these throws well, under pressure. That's the one thing you didn't see tonight. I think he has some weaknesses when it comes to sometimes falling away from throws under pressure. You, you didn't really have to see that tonight. UConn got no pressure. Wilson, sideline route. Collins, it's intercepted by Jamal Summers. 12th career pick for the senior corner of UConn. And a flag comes in late on the sideline. There are a couple down. Let's see. There might be a Could be not sportsmanlike for yeah. Summers for throwing the ball down out of frustration. Been a tough night for Jamar, but well, it's just don't want to see that from a senior. And Randy Hetzel is letting him have it. Well, I mean, uh, to his credit, he was just running down at the gunner position the play before. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 21 defense, taunting. The penalty is 15 yards from the succeeding spot. UConn keeps the ball first down. That is number 21's first unsportsmanlike conduct out of the game. If you get two, you are ejected from the game. It's the first turnover of our ball game tonight. Yeah, that was real. A lot of frustration, and don't know really where it it, it comes from because you you run down. Maybe it has something to do with him running down. I circled him running down as a gunner the play before. And it looks like, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Randy Edsel, I think, told him to go to the locker room after that. He was very angry, and I think he sent him into the locker room for the rest of the night. Pendell chased out of bounds by Sparks. Let's go back down to Mel. Well, Dave, just to confirm what you said, Randy Edsel is furious at Jamar Summers. He just told him to get off the field into the locker room, and I don't think he'll be back. Reading lips, that's what we thought, Melanie. We saw Randy confront Jamar Summers when he headed off the field there, and boy, for a senior. Coming off an interception, Corey talked about the hustle on the punt coverage. I mean, you know, it's just a tough night. Tough night. Beals is the motion man. Run play loses territory for Mensa and UConn to end the third quarter. End of the third is 45-12. Randy Edsel and the Huskies 
Not a good night with Mizzou head to head. You're watching College Football CBS Sports Network presented by Geico. Enter the fourth 45 12 game Missouri in control over UConn from the American Conference tonight. Randy Edsel Jamar Summers Corey I'm not sure I've ever seen this before in my entire career. A head coach telling a player to leave with so much time left on the clock after interception. Well, now I realize that's a well, sportsman I mean, call. If I, could, but if I could get you to watch the NFL, Mike Singletary did that one time with Vernon Davis. All right, I'm talking college football. There's <laughs> McLean can't bring that one in. It's incomplete. Oh, don't start trying to act like you watched the NFL, Dave. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I watch enough, enough college football throughout the week. That's that's my football fix. All right, so Randy Edsel does that. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if that's the move that you're sending, using to send a message to the rest of your football team. Uh, in terms of just unacceptable penalties, then that's fine. I mean, I think that does it mean that you're going to get better as a football team? I don't know. I think if, uh, the discipline part of your football team comes during the week. And I think you've seen a lot of uh, some of his practices. You know, he's executed them uh, when they've had other things come up. And we've seen that just this past week. Dominic Collins makes a fair catch at about the 29. There is a flag down. During the kick, holding number one receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. Dave, this is you. Look, look at this right here. I want everybody at home to know this. How is am I Dave. involved in this? No, no, I'm going to tell you how. Because what are you what, talking about? Me and you roasted marshmallows. That was you <laughs> trying to blow them out just so we could eat one because you were so hungry. And now you're on this gluten free diet. <laughs> And I, I guess maybe not even gluten free. What is it? Uh, pescatarian. Oh, pescatarian. Well, I've been GF for a few years. Yeah. Well, we're not yeah. going to be grilling any chicken anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> grilled shrimp would be great, though. I'm Had sure a great would. Shrimp salad for lunch today. I'm trying to make sure you break these rules. I'm going to have you eat a steak. Wilson, well, the offense. Florida has the catch. And Marche Terry. Shoves him out of bounds. Good pickup, though, for Missouri. First down. Now to about the 37. But you talk about Randy Edsel and discipline. And, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it was a good point you brought up earlier. I just wonder. Um, I, I think he's done some things. He talked with us about some of the things that he's done uh, just this past, you know, like we were talking about during the week. That, that shows that they, they kind of coincides with him telling Summers to go inside the locker room. You know what I mean? So I don't, I'm not that surprised that that move was made. Dawson Downing had three total carries heading into the game tonight. Getting some action here. And Downing in the clear. There's a flag. Downing gets physical. Runs over Braden Brown. He's still trucking inside the 25. This could come back with a penalty. Against Missouri, but Dawson <laughs> Downing. Wow, what holding a run. number 66 offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Adam Pludre is the guilty party on the penalty, and Brayden Brown was shaken up afterwards. Look at this. Oh, oh my. <laughs> hey, you got as excited about that potentially as the hit of the year that we saw a couple of weeks back, but. Boy, I tell you what, I mean, that, that's, that's a freight trainer right there, partner. That's something that we hope Brown's OK. Yeah, he was a he's a good young prospect, but that was a moment. Wilson with a deep ball. Looking for Brown there, and it is broken up incomplete. There is a flag down. That's in the area of holding as well, maybe. Offside, number 15, defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Luke Carazola, the defensive end, and a senior from Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Well, that was outside the numbers. i tell you what, when you look at uh, these offside penalties, I thought it was more of a problem for really Missouri's defensive line coming into the game, but they've had a couple themselves, as you see Brown still getting worked on. 
Anthony Watkins, redshirt junior from Fort Meade, New Jersey, replacing Braden Brown. Micah Wilson runs the show in relief of Locke. A job well done tonight. You know the one thing you don't see much anymore, Dave, is just guys jumping routes. I mean, at, at this point in the game, why not gamble? I, I understand that, you know, you, you, it's all about right now making a tackle, making a tackle. You've missed a lot of tackles tonight. It, at some point, you've got to pull the trigger. This is a team with only three interceptions on the year. Collins have that catch, 10-yard gain. And the run play he has a first down. Markel Utzi, he's a defensive lineman. Coming in and running in the fullback. <laughs> a little celebration as well. Utzi's one of the top D linemen on this Missouri roster this year. And he gets a carry. When you're way ahead, you can do those things. Works out for you. It's a good tackle that time by Chris Britton, and I think that's awesome down. Yep. Yeah, I, I think I think that, 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 that you look at down and don't watch him drop the pads again. I mean, he's really making sure you have to wrap him up, and that physical nature is going to excite his coaches, particularly when they put the film on. Running backs coach Cornell Ford is going to be excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I, well, good runs. <laughs> I've seen it. Second down, Wilson, Collins, airmails that incomplete. I think that's what I'm talking about. At least that time you see them challenge the route, and now it comes up third down. You've got to find a way to make progress at this point in the game. If you're UConn, you're, you know, you look at the big picture. This, if you do end up losing your three and five, you still got a chance moving forward. So you've got to be able to get some positives out of this second half and fourth quarter film. You can't just let them complete a third and nine here. So if you Trey Bell, Tyler Coyle, Marche Terry, even down here at the bottom, Jordan Swan, you got to challenge this route on third down. Wilson only one for one passing on the season entering the game tonight. Third down, pressure down he goes. Junior Joseph comes up and makes a huge hit. And that's Joseph, I think that's his third career sack. I mean, he came into the game with 278 career tackles and watch the way he can unload when he connects. Mm. 13 and a half career tackles for loss coming into the game as well. Joseph is a player that really can uncork as a tackler. He's gotten better in coverage. The Tony punts, the Quavon Skeins. Fair caught at about the 10. UConn takes over a huge hole tonight. Good moment, though, for the senior, Junior Joseph. All right, Shame, tonight's Chick-fil-A game summary. Career high. Completions for Drew Locke tonight. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing that's surprising, just talking to our statistician, Dr. Rick Weiner, 77 plays for UConn, 67 for Missouri. I'll tell you what, I mean, th th that says a lot about just how they've kind of tried to manufacture offense, Connecticut, or UConn, and it's been tough. Pindell handles the snap. Burkett has the stop on defense. Pindell from Columbia, Maryland. J.C. transfer from Lackawanna Community College. Very important for him to play well now. Not because of anything with Sheriffs, but you, you, you had a your JC transfer and you, you've got a quarterback who was the quarterback of the future who's already moved on. This is a chance to prove you're ready next year to be the starter. On second down, Pendell. Pass brought in. Wavon Skeens makes the catch at the 25 yard line. First down for UConn. On with you. Vendell's got to play well here, thinking about getting the job next year. Skeens has a catch. 
Well, I mean, I think you look at what happened when Iowa State. Jacob Park was, you come into the season, former five-star recruit from Georgia, transfers in, everybody has high expectations. Now, who's leading this great run under Matt Campbell? It's, it's Kemp, a, a, a quarterback you didn't expect to be. So you never know when your number is going to be called. That's a carry. It's hit pretty hard at about the 30. What a win for Iowa State today over TCU in Ames. That's a field stormer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. boy, that place is rocking. We're watching that well, game. Well, remember, they already today. beat Oklahoma, though. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think they should. I think you got to get to the point now. Again, Matt Campbell, you can win in Iowa State. The facilities have improved. You're talking about a stadium that can get a lot of people in there. They played Iowa very tough. They could have beaten Iowa this should've year. Iowa. Yeah, so, and that was with Park at quarterback. Saw Iowa State on our air on the road and win against Akron this year. Good team. A wild finish in the Big 12 this year. Offside defense, five-yard penalty, still third down. And I think the Big 12 has some decisions to make in terms of that conference championship game. I think the one team you've got to keep an eye on is this Notre Dame team. They continue to run the ball at a high efficiency, and their defense is playing well. And USF, they're out of it now, I believe. I think they still have a loss on their hands coming up against UCF, potentially. UCF did beat Austin Peter Knight of the FCS, so Knight's the only undefeated team now in the American Conference. Watch out for Memphis. Another impressive win last night, beat Tulane. Memphis 7-1. I think Memphis wins the West in the American Conference and can beat UCF in the championship game if it comes down. Now, I know UCF beat him badly. That was in Orlando in the regular season, first game. Riley Ferguson and that Memphis team is playing very well right now. So you say they come back and... Tough to beat the same team twice in a year, right? <laughs> right. If we're going ahead and assuming UCF beats USF right. at home in the regular season finale. Which I think would still be a tough game. I think USF's defense has improved a lot under Charlie Strong, but offensively, they're not at the juggernaut they were previously under Willie Taggart. And speaking of Willie Taggart, they, they've had their struggles after losing Justin Herbert up at Oregon. Uh, great start to the year. Not so much in the Pac-12. Pendell, some pressure. Mayala catch, nice spin move. Trying to get away from Ronnell Perkins, strong safety of Missouri. And then, now let's see him, uh, how he gets rid of the ball. Doesn't even put his hand on the laces and still throws a perfect spiral. And now you've got a one-on-one -on -one tackle and he almost makes Ronnell Perkins miss. Fumble, ball's loose. And recovered by Jordan Harrell, defensive end for Missouri. Jason Thompson unable to secure the handoff there. Let's see, official timeout. Let's find out what happened. It's a penalty, an illegal substitution, so we're gonna wipe out that fumble recovery for Jordan Harrell. Um, there was a little bit of a miscommunication between him and Thompson anyway. Either you're going to, you know, put him in, put it in the belly, or you're going to take it on the zone read. Substitution foul against Missouri uh, is why they were able to keep and get the five-yard penalty, and now you got a first and five. And now on first down, has time. That's incomplete. Wavon Skeins and Herji Mayala both in the vicinity for the Huskies. You want to start trying to count, Dave? I can give you some numbers. It's a lot of, <laughs> it's more than 11. Of <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How high can you go? <laughs> well, I mean, I know sometimes I, you, you probably question my counting ability. Never. Never. <laughs> Missouri shows some pressure. Mensa the carry and his wrestle down. At about the 38-yard line, Eric Beisel, senior from Fenton, Missouri, on the stop. Well, you just wonder, though, when you, we were talking earlier about the Big 12, if you have everybody have one loss, right, and then let's say, for instance, you have two one-loss teams playing a championship game, and maybe the one-loss team that's the lowest-ranked one-loss team ends up winning. Do they get into the playoff? That's a great question. First playoff poll comes out Tuesday night. It'll be very interesting. Route jump interception, T.J. Warren. Back from academic suspension. Man, that was nice. And that was sweet. You talk about jumping around, Corey. Yeah, there well, it is. Hey, with Kanye's Georgia, he's taking it all the way back.
Time now for the general play of the game. Jonathan Johnson got loose, Corey. Breakdown, second year UConn. Forget about it, touchdown. Well, this was similar to what he was able to do against Kentucky. He got in the middle of the field and outran everybody. 75-yard touchdown in that game against Kentucky. Kind of a similar route. You don't know whether you're going to get that split safety coverage if your offensive coordinator, Josh Heupel, but on that play, he got man coverage, and then there, there was a bad angle that ultimately resulted in Johnson's TD run. Catch and run. On first down, Downey will carry. Foley Fatukasi meets him and sends him backwards. It's good to see those guys still playing hard. You've got to be a leader if you're... Agreed. You know, Fatukasi, and he's a guy that comes into the game with... 19 career tackles for loss and 13 sacks. Him along with Carazola and Ormsby, you're talking about, you know, roughly 70 tackles for loss between those three players in their careers. And they've been a big, big factor. Carazola and Ormsby have 25 sacks in between them. Uh, they've got to be better down the stretch for this team to win. Dawson Downing stays busy. Sheridan Lolly. Polishes him off back down to Melanie. Well, Dave, the youth movement has begun for both Missouri and UConn. Missouri's depth chart features 11 freshmen, redshirt freshmen, or sophomores on offense and nine on defense. Most notably, tight end Albert Okoye Boonham, running back Larry Roundtree, and defensive end Trey Williams. Then UConn has five freshmen with a start this season, including three in the secondary. They have 21 first time starters, tied for fourth in FBS, and nine freshmen starting today against Missouri. So a ton of youth on both of these teams. Some young as well. Youth movement between these two programs right now they're trending in opposite directions based on this result Dawson Downing Jr. Joseph trying to hang on for dear life does drag him down but another nice pickup for Downing has run hard and run well here in relief duty of uh, the key backs Larry Roundtree and Ish Witter with Demaria Crockett out for the year and that's why I think based on what she was talking about with the players that are playing the youth on UConn's team that's why Fatukazi has to make those plays in the fourth quarter of a game like this. He has to set the groundwork and the foundation for this team to grow from, you know, his leadership along with Carazola and Ormsby. First down. Wilson falls down. What's left for Missouri? Talking about Florida. Just got crushed on CBS today by Georgia. As the Dogs remain undefeated in the SEC East. Tennessee, Vandy, and Arkansas. Now, Tennessee and Vandy have not won a league game. Arkansas, we talked about that crazy game with Ole Miss today. Winnable games? What do you think for Coach Odom and the Tigers? you got to out-offense these teams. These teams are all offensively challenged, whether it's Felipe Franks, uh, you know, Guarantino. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you, you had a, a good start to the year for Kyle Shermer. Uh, Brandon Allen is not even starting full time in Arkansas any, anymore. So you've got to win with Drew Lott. If Drew Lott. Oh, boy. We got some downings on the move here. <laughs> nice run. No, but my point, Dave, is that Drew Lott has to beat all four of those teams if he's going to t be thought about in the next level in terms of taking his game to the next level. He's got to beat all four of those teams. And we talked about the win-loss record for Locke. Of course, his starter tonight, he'll get the victory. He's his eighth. You just can't lose tired. those games. That's right. I, I mean, it, the bottom line is those quarterbacks you're playing against, I don't care how many points they put up, you've got to put up more points than them, and that's the challenge for Drew Locke in these last four games. Downing. Lolly makes the play again on defense for UConn. It's been a while, the 2014 season for Missouri to play in a bowl game. Beat Minnesota that year in the Citrus Bowl. Five and seven, 2015, last year for wins. Barry Odom's first season at the helm in Columbia. You know, his alma mater, star linebacker as a player for the Tigers. 15 years been involved in the program as a player, administrator, assistant coach, and now head coach. Well, Barry Odom, there's a reason why he got the job. They were sixth in the nation in total defense in 2015. Had 106 tackles for losses. That was sixth. Keeper, Wilson, end zone, touchdown, Missouri. 22 yards. And the first career rushing touchdown for Micah Wilson, the freshman from Tulsa. 
Excellent job reading Ford. He comes down and crashes. You take it. And you were talking about maybe Drew Locke doing some of this. Uh, Wilson shows he has no problem doing it. And that bodes well for the future of this quarterback position at Missouri. Very, very good athlete, Wilson. And I like them throwing the ball before the game. The ball comes out of his hand pretty well, as, too. It looked great, didn't it? Yeah, and Rumps. I saw you down there, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. That too. I was watching. <laughs> PAT from a can. Nice moment from Micah Wilson. First career touchdown run. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Go RVing. Find your way. Go RVing. By Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Mortgage confidently. And by Verizon. The best network and the best unlimited. For those of you tuning in for the Boise State Utah State game, you'll be able to find that online at cbsports.com slash live. And as soon as it kicks off, of course, we'll get you out immediately to that game after the conclusion of our game here. Logan, Utah. Aggies head to head with the Broncos. Big game in the Mountain West. And a big moment for Wilson with a touchdown run. Moment ago, 52-12. Skeins takes an 84 touchback. Timeout in East Hartford, Missouri, rolling tonight. Brent Stover in New York coming up in moments. Boise State, Utah State. It's now streaming at cbssports.com slash live. We'll get you out there to Logan as soon as you guys are done. Dave, Corey, and Melanie. All right, Brent, thanks so much. Looking forward to that game in the Mountain West as Boise State tries to stay hot against the Aggies. A good matchup. Pindell runs the show. And Mensa with a carry. Kevin Mensa, big pickup. Stopped by Nate Anderson, Jr. from Roswell, New Mexico. JC transfer for Missouri in pursuit. Gain of 26 for Mensa. His long run of the night. Gives him 60 rushing yards. Mensa carries again. Hangs on to the ball. And drags tacklers for another nice pickup for UConn. Get to 13, first down. Revisiting Corey's keys. Yeah, controlled the line of scrimmage. A lot of these yards have been, I, I don't know, kind of like hidden yardage, like late. Uh, and then we, one thing that we don't have on there is the sacks. They've had, they've affected in, in, in that category at all. The three and outs, they weren't able to get them as Anderson. Boy, that was a pretty good hit too. But Anderson kind of represents a little bit about what this Missouri front has done to this UConn offense all night. Nate Anderson, top 15 ranked nationally, JC defensive end. He had 13 tackles for loss and five sacks at New Mexico Military Institute last year. He's a junior at Missouri. Care there for Jason Thompson, junior from Shelton, Connecticut. Boise State, Utah State game underway. Now available at cbssports.com slash live. We'll get you out to say who's that ball game going out in Logan, Utah as soon as this one is over. Broncos and Aggies. We were talking about that Missouri front. I mean, they've got five sacks, too, to go along with, you know, limiting this run game. And you make UConn one-dimensional, and, and that would be the challenge without Newsom. It, you, you knew it would be tough for Sheriff to kind of carry the load against this team. Here's third down. Ooh. Whoa, I finally saw somebody jump a route. Gerard Skate Alton. Intended. Receiver Gerard Alton did jump that route, but he overran it. He did. I, mean, I, just, I just want to see somebody jump a route. I mean, when, why don't we see this more in, in college football? Screen, 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 screen. I want to see somebody jump the screen. And the last guy that I saw do it, and do it the way that it should be done, was our guy out at Northern Illinois. 
Sean Lurie, and he just absolutely jumped it against Nebraska and took it to the house. That was pretty cool seeing <laughs> two first half pick sixes for Northern Illinois against Nebraska. You've got to change the way the game is played. I think right now the game is being played on the perimeter, and, and as, as you see, Pendle kind of float that one over the head. But I, again, I, I think you've got to be able to just change it up sometimes and maybe like show some disguises and let these corners jump some of these quick screens. So UConn will see the two game win streak come to a crashing halt here. And USF having lost to Houston, first setback of the year for Charlie Strong and the Bulls. UCF then BC, the game we'll have on CBS Sports Network. Special presentation from Fenway Park in Boston. And struggling Cincinnati under first year head coach Luke Fickle to wrap up the regular season. That Boston College team is, mm. we talked about it earlier, but uh, they're, they're becoming a complete team. They're going to upset somebody else in the ACC. Dawson Downey gets another carry. By far his most work in his career. Stopped by Sterling. Boston College has beaten Louisville, they've beaten Florida State. I mean, they've, they've not some big victories down the stretch. Began the year on CBS Sports Network in DeKalb, beating that Northern Illinois team you talked about. And that Very was a good, good game. football game. It was a 23 20, right? Game. Yep. Steve Adazio, I think, very underrated coach at BC. Absolutely. I think he's one of the better coaches in terms of consistent year in and year out. And they won last last year. They won their bowl game, the quick lane bowl, and that was against a good Maryland team. Downing. Stopped by Omar Fort. Ten-game road win streak is about to come to an end for Barry Odom in Missouri. It'll be his first road win. He had been 0-7, goes all the way back to 2015, the win at Arkansas State in Jonesboro, September of 2015, the last Mizzou road win until tonight. This is going to be a happy trip back to Columbia for the Tigers. Now, how many more of those games that we, we put up the schedule earlier, how many of those games are on the road? I think that's important to, as well, just because... Two at Vandy at Arkansas, home to Florida and home to Tennessee. And I think those are the, 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 those two games are the Arkansas game will be a little bit tougher atmosphere, but and they're scoring some points now. Downing continues to run hard. Fifty-two twelve. Corey's going to be the final. That's a nice road win for Missouri. It is, and that's a big-time win for the continued improvement of Drew Locke. And we'll see what he does as he hits this SEC stretch with Barry Odom. Missouri wins its second straight. For Corey Chavis, Melanie Collins, the entire CBS Sports Network crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now to Logan, Utah with Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell. On the call, Boise State taking on Utah State in the Mountain West. Guys.